Yo, what's going on, Usual Suspects? Welcome to the Monday Midso. Today, we are going to talk about the 700 sitting. You know, what's going on with Kanye? We're also going to talk about Sneaker YouTube. Uh, also, Off-White, is that the best brand out here right now? We're going to get into the DB15s and who wants them. And then we're going to get into SneakerCon Atlanta. And the Monday Midso starts right now. I'll text you. I'll send you a text, but I'll talk about this one right now. All this right. is Bean Burrito Gang. I stick with that. Do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! You're now tuned into the Monday Mid Zone with your host, Elon James, One Legged Mister, Buckeye City Soul, and Molly Ball. Let's get the show started, fellas. Yo, got fire! Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Monday and this Midso Monday or Monday Midso, whatever you want to talk about. It is the day after SneakerCon, so it's a SneakerCon hangover. Therefore, we are missing two people in the group. But I am your co-host, Buckeye City Soul or Kev from the OHIO, and I'm going to go ahead and pass it to my homie, Ma. What's going on, my people? Usual suspects. Welcome to another great episode of the Monday Midso. It's your co-host, Molly Mall, aka Mr. Accidental Purchase, your favorite light skin friend. So, as Kevin mentioned, we got a great show ahead of you, fresh from Sneaker Con. We're gonna get into that. But first, I want to introduce you to the one and only Erica Elizabeth. How you doing? Hello, hello. Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. So um again. Erica, event planner, influencer. I mean, you might as well just have all of the above. So um, I want to take this opportunity for the people to get to know you and her information in the description if you want to check out her social media. But first things first, we're going to ask like we do all the time, what shoe got you into the game? Shoe got me into the game? Yes. Um, honestly, Chuck's got me into the game. My grandfather used to rock um, high top chucks and it kind of just stuck with me. So seeing him, like a picture from him way, way back in the day, it, uh, it kind of just sparked my interest. That and the Sandlot, the Sandlot, but <laughs> those two, yeah, those two factors kind of get it for me. All right, are we still rocking chucks? Uh-oh. We lost? Am I muted? No, you're good. Oh, okay. I can see her moving. Yeah, so. sorry. It's, it, it's freezing on my end, so That's I can't right. tell. Okay. For everyone at home, she, she's she's working right now, you know? So she's on, like, that hotel Wi-Fi. She's still on the grind. Uh, so it may cut out a little bit here and there. Just stick with us. We're going to get through it. Um, you know, with that, I don't want to, you know, take up any – I don't want to waste any time. I want to make sure we get the most – out of everything. So why don't you tell everyone kind of your story? There yeah, again, I, I don't, I only got story. Oh, froze. Yep. Oh, no problem. No problem. So, um, no, all good for the chat for everyone watching. Why don't you just kind of fill us in on your story? Okay. Um, so my story, I guess I'll fast forward from the Chuck, <laughs> that triggered it. I um I actually went to school for so sneakers has always kind of been something that has just always been a passion of mine. Um, I took it a step further and really studied more specifically in the performance of athletic footwear. So I worked with a lot of podiatrists to really break down the skeleton of different kinds of shoes. Um, I was able to design a shoe for, fast for a little bit, a collaboration with. Um, it was when Reebok was dropping all of the ventilator collaborations, and, and I was able to secure the women's ventilator that they had came out with, um, the diamond ventilator, which was dropped through a boutique in Brooklyn. Um, and that was coming from the design point. But I um, I got heavy into sneakers more so when I moved to New York um, and teaming up with Clark Kent and doing the Ultimate Sneaker Expos. 
So we had a good run with those. Um, and from, from that, I mean, I was able to kind of meet and shake hands and kiss babies with all the boutiques and retailers throughout New York and the country. Um, so it's kind of just, it was, it's been something, it continues to be something that sleep. So right now you got your hands in all different sorts of things, right? You curate, um, party plan. I mean, you share with us kind of all the different hats that you wear. Yeah, so many different hats. I'm um, so from designing to marketing to, uh, to brand activations that I produce. Um, I, it's really across the spectrum, even then to lining up interviews and podcasts for Clear the Story and hearing the behind the scenes of certain things from brands. Um, and right now, I'm actually, I'm in Orlando producing a mission for New Balance. It's the DTLR managers meeting uh, today and tomorrow. So New Balance, you know, hit me up. And said that I came down here, brought a DJ, and uh, we've been doing our thing for the last, you know, last 24 hours with New Balance. We'll continue tonight and tomorrow. That's it. Nice. The grind never stops. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Back. So how did how did you link with Clark Kent? Um, so his partner for the sneaker shows, I had had came into the sneaker store that I was managing at the time, which was Renards Footwear. Um shout out to the owners of Renards Footwear. They actually own Extra Butter as well. So they really gave me my first opportunity in New York. Um, I worked both sides. Um, so Clark's partner came into Renards when I was managing and if I wanted to be a part of the team. Started the media run. And when we started the media run that I had kind of helped put, put together, um, that's when and you know, we kind of just hit it off and really got along, obviously both being lovers of sneakers. So the rest is kind of history. That's what's up. Um, so I was looking through your profile page. Kev, is that you or me? Uh, it's not me. Are you echoing? Yeah, I can hear the echo. It's just a heads up. Um, okay. So what advice would you give to you know someone who's looking to kind of follow in your steps and penetrate the market? Who? I said, what advice would you give for someone who's kind of follow, looking to follow in your steps and penetrate that market? Um, Best and like top advice that I could give is highly stay active, go out, meet people at work. These footwear events in your local cities are everything to meeting the right people. And the more consistent you are with it and the more you show people are going to, you know, recognize you and, and see you around more. So they're going to naturally assume that you're a part of the industry. Okay. It's, still, it's okay. You just kind of have to finesse that until they really get to know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so now would you consider yourself a collector? What kind of branding would you give yourself when it comes to kind of sneakers? What brand? Or what title? Like what type of collector? Outside of like, would yeah, you that, call yourself a collector? Would, as a consumer. You... So, you know, from the business standpoint, we know everything you have going on there. But in terms of being a consumer, you know, are you more of a casual purchaser? Are you more of a collector? Like kind of what's your niche? Um... I would say say collector but like i collect collect it and collect these sneakers and they just sit i, I right. wear everything um so you can still wear them and be a collector for those uh, you, have be, would... you have to be a hoarder yes <laughs> yeah, I, wear all mine. I would wear i, I try to wear yeah. all mine i just yeah so i would say collector wear them. i don't like the term sneakerhead i don't think i'm a sneakerhead i know my shit about shoes but I don't know. I just, I don't like the term. Not me. Selector. Dope. All right. So you're from Cleveland. So we're going to start a Cleveland. little rapid fire. <laughs> a little rapid fire here. All right. We're, uh, Braun or MJ? Which one you taking? 
Uh, uh, I would have to say MJ. Boom. All right, Nike or Adidas? We can start with those two. I know, I know you you have your hands uh, on a lot of different brands, but Nike or Adidas? That's okay. Um, I would have to say. Jack Silver Stripes? <laughs> I would say Adidas. Oh, the underdog. What, and, and what reason is that? Just out of curiosity. Adidas. Well, one, I'm German. So for those who don't know, everyone, that's my every, my first question from everybody. I'm German. So with Adidas being German, it's kind of, okay. you know. Um, but Adidas too, I, I just kind of... I've always been partial to to three stripes. Aside from the Chucks, Adidas were some of my first shoes, even before Nikes. Okay, I'm. A, I get it. I get it. Um, basketball or football? Football. Basketball or football? Basketball. Word. Hip hop or R and B? You said hip hop or R and B? I'd say hip hop. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll let I'll let uh, I'll let Kent know you. You're still good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kobe or Shaq? Ooh, Kobe. That's right. Now you now you scored some points with me. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna scroll up here in the chat. I just want to pull some questions here that I saw. There's one uh, from Malik right there. It says uh, DJ yeah. Clark Kent always mentions that there's no sneaker culture how do you feel about that um you said there's no sneaker culture well no the question think... says that clark kent says that i guess that right now state of the culture there is no sneaker culture so what are your thoughts on that statement i completely agree i think it's i think it's just been a wave the last couple of years that everyone's just been trying to ride and hop on because it's been cool those who really eat, breathe, and sneak, like eat, breathe, and sleep sneakers, it's kind of, for me personally, it's kind of killed it for me. Um, just with too much hype and just too much of everything, just kind of, there's no culture to it. It's just, if everybody is, you know, right. just too much of everything. It was when it was kind of more low key, and the people who were really about it were the ones that were in it. So, you know, doing the events and everything, kind of, you know, being behind the scenes, what do you think can be done overall to bring more of that culture back? Um, I think the hype beasts need to quit hyping things that shouldn't be hyped. And the things that should be hyped, I think that they shouldn't hype them so that the people who really appreciate them can enjoy them more. So it's like... You know, like when, um, okay, so shirts and shoes, their value goes up only so many pairs of them. So the lesser there is of something and the more scarce it is, the more value that it has and the more people want it or want to be a part of it. And I feel like because there's so much access to everything and because the sneaker community just everyone wants to claim to be a part of it's not as boutique feeling to give it that that like special type feeling and mainstream and ran through now kind of just beaten so you know obviously you, you mentioned about the ultimate sneaker expo and, and that being um kind of an entry point what do you think you know in terms of where we're at now with say like sneaker con being you know more global and some of the other shows that are starting to pick up traction. How do you feel that, you know, what effect does that have on the culture? And you cut out in the middle there. I missed that in the middle. Part. Um, no, just in terms of like where we're at now with like sneaker con and some of the other bigger shows, like looking back on, on the work that you did with ultimate sneaker expo, like how do you think that compares and contributes to some of the problem or maybe part of this, what could be part of the solution? Uh, I think it's a problem that people want to like, I don't think it's a problem that people want to ride the wave and kind of be a part of something. 
and try out the people. If you want to, you want to try it and you want to do it, do it, you know, kudos to you. Um, I mean, so solution for a lot I don't know if there's a solution. Um, I think it's just going to naturally happen over time. I do feel like dying down will take a couple more years until the wave's completely over. But I think it's something just that has to happen naturally to be put into place mm -hmm. now do you think that we can get back to kind of more of that organic grassroots type uh, of collector or culture or do you think that you know once the wave is over that it's pretty much going to crash and burn i don't think it's going to crash and burn i think once the wave go it's going to go back to being kind of how it was um if you think about it everything has its little comes back every uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. so I feel like the hype of now I've like died down it's gonna go quiet and it's gonna go back to the beginning of the cycle to where people who are really about it in real community and industry they're going to have that feeling again that it's not oversaturated with just a bunch of people or something to say that they're part of something or because it's cool. All right. All right, Kev, you got any follow-up? No, I just want to know, like, how did you, like, what made you leave Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> Like, like what, like what led you from, you know, Cleveland to, to New York? I mean, that's kind of a big jump. Um, uh, most of the people from Cleveland that leave Cleveland end up down here. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, back story from New York. So I was raised back and forth between Cleveland and New York. Okay. Um, you know, I'd spend my summers out in New York, my weekends, holidays, and I always I her. It's I'm kind of gritty like New Yorkers in the fast pace and the hustle and the bustle. Cleveland was. I love my city. It's just I'm from Cleveland the moment I turned 18 down to Orlando. So I did come down south for a little bit. Okay. Um, and then I, and it's, I kind of, it's just home. It's Cleveland is home too. I always, I, I, I rep Cleveland harder than, but the hustle and the bustle out in New York and just the everyday grind is kind of where. I enjoy being at so that and I have this to in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, why would why would you pick the Cleveland teams when you could pick the New York? And I mean the Browns. I don't know, man. I mean Browns, Giants, Knicks, Cavs. It's all the same shit now. Don't even matter. <laughs> uh, the Giants at least won a little bit. Uh, I I was a Browns fan. I was. And I had to make the change. I had to make a change. And I could I just couldn't do the Browns anymore. I got tired of hating Sundays. Mm. So you know, I still I still have a place in my heart for the Browns. So I don't know if you guys see like, like I'm my story. Mm -hmm. Like we've won two games this season. I think we're like two five and one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe no, we lost yesterday, so we might be six and one season for us i'm i'm so much of a diehard browns fan i literally have like people sending me browns just how cleveland sports teams and i don't switch over like i i never switch over you ask me my favorite teams can so like with lebron leaving you still diehard Cavs. Yeah, because I was a fan. I was a Cavs fan. Okay, all right. I, I'm, so, a, I'm a Cavs is a Lakers fan now. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a Lake Show fan. <laughs> he's, uh, he's one of those. I'm he's a I'm a I am ai was a Heat off. at fan. You know, not a Heat fan. I was wherever he at. So you know, like <laughs> I'm a you know I I rock with the basketball has always been like that for me though because I grew up being a Jordan fan and him not being in Cleveland and tearing up Cleveland. You you would go to the games just to watch Jordan. Like when I was a kid, yeah, of course. Like when I was a kid, 
we would go to Municipal Stadium and watch the Indians get tore up by whatever team came in in town because they were terrible back in, like, I think, like, the 80s. They didn't get good until, like, the 90s, 95, when they moved to the new stadium. Then they want to get good and stuff. Still lose to the Yankees. <clears throat> Uh-huh. Yeah, I um, yeah, I don't. Amazing player and the best for our generation for sure. Um, but yeah, that's loyalty right there, Kev. Hey man, I'm loyal to the player. <laughs> You're a free agent like them. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. I'm I'm oh so for, I mean football. I'll pro- I'll I'll stay with the Ravens. I mean I think that I like the way that they run things. I have confidence in what they're going to do. I mean, the Browns, they seem to keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. You know, they just got rid of Hugh. Mm-hmm. So maybe they'll win a couple of those close games. Yeah. Could happen. I, I want basketball to go back to the like, 90s. Yes. I need to see, like, people fighting fans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and... man. You want to go to Detroit. <laughs> I need, I need to... I need to see. I need to see. I want to see like AI get his hair braided. <laughs> well, they, they may end up there. Yeah, that's a little soft right now for me. Well, that's why I like that Lakers Rockets game. <laughs> Early in the season, and they're already coming to blows. Like, oh, spitting on each yeah. other. That's I don't crazy. know about the whole spitting thing. Now you can leave that, you know, out of it. Um, but all the other stuff. I mean, Ingram shoving Harden. Like, come on, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> But yeah, the spitting. Oh, you faded. Let's get it back. You there? This episode is brought to you by Midsole Wireless. <laughs> That's hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> no, it's probably just like super overworked because everybody's probably on it right now. Or that. Yeah, my bad. My connection is horrible. No, no, it's all good. So um, I'm ch- scrolling through the chat just to make sure we didn't miss anybody's questions. Um, let's see. Bills, 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 Bills. Nobody cares about the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> yes, the Browns did play on the Indians field. They had a, like a, like it was like old candlestick type park where they had the, the, oh, yeah, yeah. the diamond going. I used to hate that look. Ah. Uh-huh. I used to hate that look, but then they they split them up. It's see, nice down there now. The play. What did you guys see the play on the Indians logo that I did for a custom? No, I didn't. I'm about to look. The me. Who was How it for? Was that? How long ago was it? Um, it was a couple weeks ago. If you scroll through my feed, you'll see it. It was just for me. I've been dabbling in custom jerseys. Oh, the jersey. Oh, you know what? I did yeah. see that. I, no, did I saw see that. that. I saw that. Yep. Yeah. yeah with, the, with the Cleveland C on, across it. Dabbling, and I'm going to be pushing really hard in 2019. So I've just been – well, yeah, that's the Cavs. Right. Joint, but I have an Indian joint, so white, with the Indians logo on the back. Let me see if I can send it to you guys. With the uh, the year on the front, yeah, but it's the back of that. Let okay, me... yeah, I got it here. I can find it. That's dope. Did you 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 designed it? You drew it too? Somebody do it, but then I had it made. I wonder if they'll uh, yeah, if, if they'll be. I wonder if ten years from now if they'll still be the Cleveland Indians. Mm. Uh, what are they gonna be? Cleveland Good question. Indigenous. Well, they're. Trying to well, they're trying to get rid of the chief Wahoo. Where's he? At? Oh, I got there. Are, they're also um, who is the Redskins too? They wanna yeah, they wanna change. They've been they've been fighting. Yeah, and you got the Chiefs. You got a lot of them. You, you got, got the a lot of them. Braves and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike, he said, "Where's the ugly member?" <laughs> yeah. Right. It, Let's see here. Yeah, that's awesome. This is the one in front of the complex that I'm looking at. I got it right here. All right, hold on. 
Hold up, let hey, me see. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's dope. dope. Is that in brown's uh, colors? Yeah. Looks like it's in brown. Okay, cool. Well, I went to Bowling Green, so I'm cool with orange okay. and brown. So I can I can uh, rock okay. with orange and brown. You know, I still I have like, I think I have like seven or eight Browns jerseys somewhere. I mean, just Browns Ooh. where it's easy to go to the Browns, uh, go to Berea, and go to camp and stuff, and then you buy jerseys like real jerseys that they wore. Uh, from the locker room sale, but I'm a Ravens fan now. That's awesome. <laughs> that. Yeah, the, and crazy. the Ravens are kind of like the Browns, though. I mean, of it's course. you know, I legitimize it. <laughs> well, before you mentioned that, Kev, I figured that was the reason, but now I just know you got tired of getting beat up. <laughs> I got tired of getting beat up, and I hate I hate the Bengals and I hate the Steelers. So it was like, all right, well, they got the Browns. Bones, like you know, there's Cleveland, Ozzy Newsom. I grew up watching Ozzy, um, so yeah. I bet. Um, so we're just about to round eight thirty. We're gonna get into releases. Awesome. Um, so I know you've got plenty of work to do, so we will let you go. We appreciate you coming on. Yes, thank you. No, for coming thank you on. so much, guys. And I appreciate you having me. Yeah. As I mentioned, you can find all her information in the description. Go check her page out. It's super dope. Um, and if you have questions that maybe you didn't want to ask publicly about more, you know, what she does, then, you know, by all means, reach out. She's been super cool. So um, any closing words that you have for us before we let you go? Um, only closing words is that everybody can tune into this podcast every yes. time it airs because it is live. You guys have great guests. Got to definitely keep pushing. And however I can help, please let me know. Hey, that's what we're doing. We're trying to push the culture forward. So, you know, whenever the hype and the wave crests and it drops, we're going to be right here to pick it up and keep it going. (laughs) (laughs) It was was very uh, monumental. Yes, yes. In a nutshell, we did it. We can't stop, won't stop. We just can't going to keep going. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, again, we appreciate it. You have a good evening and have a great event. Going to. Enjoy. Bye. See ya. And then there were two. And then All right. There so, were um, two. This is like, like an open letter conversation now, but we're going to keep it moving like we always do. Um, I mean, Kev, you pick anything up? I did pick up a couple things. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, I these just came in yesterday. Oh, look at the, you! Uh, I did cop. Mm-hmm. I did cop these. And I think mo- we all got them. I believe. I don't know if Marcus picked them up or he not. Did. He did. I he think did? he did. I, then we. If so we got a team cop. Yeah, team cop. Hey. Um, the sneaker room. A uh, shout out to them uh, for the breast cancer awareness. At yes. first, I didn't think that I was gonna be, you know, had the finances and time to do to make it happen. But, um, you know, things worked out the way they're supposed what to. What number did you get? I got one, 132. What'd you got? Oh, that's you... Cool. I got 287. All right, all right. Yep, all right. made from the heart. Um, so, again, for the, anyone who's unfamiliar with the pair, this is the Sneaker Room collaboration, the SE Trainer, Breast Cancer Awareness. Got the uh, Sneaker Room Cares, SR Cares on the tongue. On the inside, it's individually numbered. As I just mentioned, I have pair 287 of 525. Um, on the inside, it does say made from the heart. So there's a lot of dope, intricate details that are on the on the sneaker. And uh, 100% of the proceeds are going to be donated for breast cancer research. So sneaker room located in Jersey City in New Jersey, my state. What up? What up? Um, Siraj Kaufman, the owner of the shop, along with his great team. They're, they're the, the brains and behind the operation that's doing so much for the community there so shout out to them shout out, shout to, out to Jen too shout uh-huh. out to Jen who does a lot of a lot of work behind the scenes all great people there uh we had Siraj on the show so you know hopefully everyone's familiar with them in the shop this pair amazing yeah I had to I had to definitely you know get these my uh, well, a couple years ago uh my mom had a um you know had a bout with breast cancer um uh, fortunately it was early detected and um, she's cancer free today, um, but you know it's, it definitely feels good to go ahead and spend money 
on something that is going to give back to, um, you know, research, uh, you know, for people that are going to encounter it down the road and her people who are encountering it right now. Um, so definitely check them out. They may still have some left. There may be some pairs. You might get lucky. You but might. when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> they're gone. So, and I think, I mean, I saw, I saw the ones last year on StockX, but they're going for like $700 for the pink pair. So yeah. So the pink pair retails at 200. There's a white pair that retails at 500. And then there was a black pair that was super sick that retailed at 1000. If you got all three of them together, it was 1500. Uh, again, all the proceeds, all the money does go to or, uh, to charity directly, uh, breast cancer research. So, um, really the joy with five seventeen. Um, uh, and, uh, I also, oh. I got these two, um, uh, the, the satin. satin, satin fives. I didn't, I don't think I showed these last week. I don't know if I, I had them last week. I don't week. remember. No, I didn't. Um, satin fives. They're oh. all right. Um, <laughs> I wish, I, I, I honestly wish that it was Chris a monster. I wish it was a new buck or a suede. I would like that better, but I still, I still like the colorway. I think it's clean. Um, I probably won't wear it as much. Um. I'll probably wear the metallics over these, uh, but I got those. Um, and then shout out to uh, Nation of Souls. Um, and if you guys aren't subscribed to their um, their little sweepstakes thing, it's like twenty bucks for the year, and they have um, sorry, and they have um, raffles every week uh, for a pair of shoes. And I happen to win uh, not this Friday, but last Friday. I was at Phil Collins. And then uh, Kickstrong hit me up. He's like, hey, man, you won. So I picked mm -hmm. these because I want to try to hoop in these. Um, definitely going to have to get an ankle brace. Um, but, yeah, the fresh bread for free. Well, $20 <laughs> for the year. So you can't, bang, can't, bang. can't beat that. And uh, along the same lines, I got Ooh. the um, the Prince Hakeem's. That is a t I might be a team cop, too. Yeah, it might be. over there. It Andre was there. I forgot about those. So, Kev, you just showed those twice. <laughs> yeah, all right. Boom, boom. Boom, All right. Uh, yeah, the Prince Hakeems. That's what I call them. Um, but, yeah, I actually, uh, we were going to do a review, like another live review like we did with the Jordan 33. Uh, but I had got home so late. Um, I had taken some footage. So, you know, maybe I'll pop out a review. Um, if you guys are thinking about buying these for basketball, um, just make sure you have some ankle braces. Um, because there's not too much ankle protection. The shock is awesome in these. It's the same as the, the 15. Um, it, it feels the same, but I, I don't feel as much control in the shoe up top as the 15. But I think it's a better looking shoe than the 15. And it makes me feel like I'm contradicting myself because the 15 low looks a lot like these to me. And I was, you know, talking shit about them, but they're basically... The, I mean, they're very similar. So, like anywhere from uh, what was that? The the KD. What what KD was it? The last two that were like, damn. Near oh, the, the nine and the ten, but yeah. they were very very similar. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of like that type of transition. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely dope. I wish that they would make a a mid for the bronze. Hey, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, super chat. So since we're the only ones on there, we get to split the money, right? None this way. All right, uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. I know right, you so, grab some things. Uh, again, pause. the uh, <laughs> <laughs> pause, pause. Um, again, sneaker room collab, the SE trainer, those LeBrons that you just showed, um, and then I got a pair of customs in, and this is for my homie. Andrew TL on the gram. I'm okay. constantly posting the things that I get from him. And this was one of those made, like, one of those just, I don't know, very organic and, like. Yeah, he does dope work. Didn't he make, uh, I think he made the skunk ones. Yes, he did that. Um, so he, he did, I forgot, 25, maybe 30, 30 pairs of those. So I know um, the Gasm two. got a pair. Between 25 and 50 but this was like just a real fluent organic conversation that we were having we were kicking around some ideas he's like yeah i'm thinking about doing the uh fill in the blanks and i was like oh yeah what basically are, are you thinking of and first we were looking at the four which is coincidental and I'll, I'll go into that um but then he was like i think it looked better on a three so i'm like all right well what base do you want you know what base would you need for that 
he mentioned the base. I was like, oh, didn't I send you a pair of those a while ago? Like, <laughs> I just, I, I, if I find a deal, uh-huh. I'll buy it and ship it directly to him. And it's be like, just chill with exactly. it. Exactly. So I was going to make either like another what the or a PE. Like I had a design. It was like three quarters of the way done and we never finished it. So he had it all taped up, ready to go. And he was like, all right, well, let's do these day, day to deaths. So. Oh, wow. The, yes, sir. The Kyrie 3. Day of the Dead. I mean, the details are just so sick, so money. And like I said, coincidentally enough, we were going to do a four, and we have a rendering for the four, and Nike went ahead and released them. Um, That's crazy. So it looks like they kind of had the same concept, same idea that we had, uh, you know, with this, with the three. And, I mean, he killed it all the way down to the details of the insole. Like, yeah, that's dope. Man, that dude does crazy good work. Shout yeah. out to uh, Demetrius Reynolds, man. Thank you, bro. What up? Appreciate it. So it's funny because I got the box today. I just, you know, you know, clearly I just got back from from Atlanta, right. and I go and pick it up, and I'm looking at him like, wait, did he send me a special box too? The outside of the box was like from HalloweenCostumes.com or something. So <laughs> I just felt like a mask. I was like, because he'll always throw in like a detail or two that he doesn't talk about. Okay. And he'll be like, oh, let me know what you think. So I thought he made like a case or something. I damn near lost my mind, but it was just coincidental. We got to get him on the that... show, man. He does oh, for some, sure. some yeah. crazy stuff. And then, you know what? Honestly, you know, I'm not a big Kyrie shoe fan, but uh, I I thought twice about those Day of the Dead. Uh, I, oh, I was able to get them. I was in no real condition, let's say, to purchase anything <laughs> on Saturday morning. I woke up. I grabbed my phone. It was like, eh, maybe five, ten after, uh, ten o'clock, you know, release time. I saw uh, Matt, Cerebral Kicks. Okay. Uh, he had sent me the got him. I'm like, oh, shoot. So I go into the app, and I'm about to purchase, and somebody hit me up like, oh, I already got him for you. I'm like, oh, perfect. Like, I don't have That's to worry about up. it. And at that point, I was just kind of like, all right, I can go back to being dead. <laughs> well, they had, they had him on Foot Locker for the longest time. and I had Oh, car- I saw him this morning, too. Yeah, I carted a pair, and I was like... Yeah. And then the Yeezys dropped. Did you cop the Yeezys? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. no so no, no, yeah, no. when I, I when I copped the Yeezys, everything else was like, ah, no, 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 because I was, I hit you guys up like, please talk me off the ledge about these Platinum Elevens. Dude. Oh, those. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that that was a no go. No. Yeah. Cops. So you know, I was I, I was about to get them just because I have all the mid all the mid Elevens outside of the Jeter uh, mids. You know, I do too, but I still can't. I can't mess with that. So, uh, you know, I was like, all right, well, let me get on Adidas. And then um, I went ahead and, and bought them. Actually, I, I like the 700s. I used I, to hate them. I don't, I don't mind them, and I really like that colorway. I just don't like the price tag. And the price tag is me not insane. feeling him right now like that. And for it to have no right. like, the resale value. I know it's not like a hype beast reseller or whatever, but realistically for it not to hold its own weight then it, it doesn't do anything for me like if there's one thing if i could cop it and get something else that i really wanted if there was a markup 50 100 whatever the case may be mm-hmm. them shit's brick so I'm, oh yeah they were they were still for sale yesterday i mean like, well up to a size 12 and i wear at least a 12 and a half in yeezys so you know my size wasn't still available but um you know, I, I I like I like the shoes. I think it's comfortable. You know, I do a lot of walking around my neighborhood, no, and, I, and I do a soft flex with the with the with the wave runners. No doubt. Hey man, you don't gotta justify the purchase to me. Yeah. You know, I'm just seeing people in the chat. You know, they talking about no 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 man, fuck y'all shoes. <laughs> I like the colorway. Again, I like the colorway. The model I don't hate, but you know, my feelings right now. I was not thinking of buying them shits. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I mean, I separate, I separate my feelings, just like I separate with buying Nikes. I mean, if I, if I was really that righteous about the purchases I make, mm-hmm. I wouldn't buy Nikes because the slave labor and all that well, good stuff. Well, it's not about me being like a holy roller. I just, oh, yeah, I but I'm just saying, I don't like, appreciate what he said. I can't go, I can't do anything and change what's going on in the factory know abroad but well i mean you can't change what he says either but no but i but i have more of an effect on an individual than i do on a company true as the masses if you don't buy from that individual the individual becomes you know insignificant it's much different when you have a brand 
Well, the problem I, is I, I'm gonna boycott Nike and Jordan. What are you gonna wear? <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get deeper into that because that's that's coming up in the topics. Right. We can kind of dive into that. Um, do you want to get into what's coming out? Let's get it. I'm ready. Right, let me go ahead and oh man, you, you, you too early. <laughs> There we go. Bang, bang. So in time for Halloween, we got a Nike Air Force One low skeleton. Yeah. yeah no. No, nah, I mean, I can't I can't do any of the um, Air Force Forces. Ones, man. I can't. I can't do it. I mean, it might, it might be a cool looking shoe, but I just got a feeling about Air Force Ones. It's just <laughs> kind of like it, they're just plain. They're like. Like the first uniform you get when you play uh, 2K or something like that, you know, it's, <laughs> they're too basic. Uh, so, no, for, I listen. I love a good Air Force One because if I think about, you know, what I used to cop, you know, year over year over year over year, it wasn't Air Force One. You get a mid for the fall and you get a low for the winter. Uh, sorry for the summer. Like so, um, with the Travis Scotts, the Don C's, the Rockefeller joints, like I went and copped all of them. Yeah, I mean, there's no movement there for me. Like, I'm soft with those. There's nostalgia. Let's put it that way. There's, there's nostalgia. I had to. Um, November 1st, Adidas Young won Sesame. Eh, I don't need them. <laughs> they ain't hype enough. Oh, boy. The hype um, beast in me only buys Yeezy. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, Nike Women's Air Vapor Max Mach 2. Eh. Celestial Teal. Eh. You know my feelings on the Vapor Max. They look like teeth and rings, so I don't mess with them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have I have one pair, and I bought my wife a pair, mm. and they're all right. I I don't like driving in them, honestly. They I feel disconnected with the bottom of my <laughs> <Yeah>. feet. <laughs> yeah, no. So um, yeah, another Adidas Young one, Alpine. No. All right. Pass. And we got a, a series of Jordan Legacy three one twos after various NBA teams, uh, their colorway. So we got the Pistons, the Knicks, Knicks tape. The and Knicks look more like a Suns to me. Uh, why? Because of the black and the orange. Because it's almost like purple. That royal, yeah, the royal blue looks. Eh, I guess it's a picture, so you got to see it in person. Yeah, um, I thought eh, maybe. I if guess. I'm not mistaken, T Mark got kicks as well as Foot Locker in New York City. They're running a giveaway for the three one two Knicks. So if you're interested and you want to try to win a free pair, go check it out. Right, right. Um, I'm I'm all done with the three twelves. I was all on board at first, and then. You know, the, sat saturation. the saturation came. Uh -huh. Hey, Francisco Torres, thanks for the sub. Uh, the oversaturation in the 312, just, it, it, it's, I'm done with them. I'm right. done with them. And then also, I think that dropping that jump man with the air on the back hurt them. Like, they should have put the Nike Air on there. Right. Maybe, you know, they could have sold some more units. Um, you already got the swoosh. You might as well go Nike Air. So, um I'm done. I'm done with them. The the Lakers colorways, all right. Mm -hmm. You going to get them for your boys? <laughs> no, uh-uh. I'm not doing that. Um, nah. The Pistons actually isn't bad, but um, I'd rather wear one. I'd rather wear a, a Jordan one than wear a yeah. 312. Listen, the, the team colorways doesn't do it for me. Right. You know, when they dropped the, um, like the classic colorways, that kind of resonated, and it was enough for, to push me over the limit. Um, the the tongue is different. It doesn't say just on, so it's not even the just on legacy three one two. This is just straight up Jordan a Jordan legacy three one two, which kind of you know supports the rumor that he had nothing to do with the design and kind of just threw his name on it, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, it's an easy pass for me. All three of them. And weren't wasn't didn't his wife or somebody come out and say that that he did design them or? Well, that that's why I call it a rumor. Um, so there's there's no confirmation of the truth. But if they're dropping the design of shoes without his branding on it, that would lead me to believe yeah, that, it was... that he was not the creator. Right. That makes sense. You know what I mean? And like I see JP is... said he got the red pair. And I wanted the red pair. But I don't I don't like the the sheen on them. It's like they need – like just like how the Toros came out. I like the Toro 4, but I feel like the red should have been more vibrant. Like it's got like a – cloudy i don't know what it is i don't know how to explain it but you know it should have been more vibrant i think uh-oh what are you doing 
Multitasking. Um, <laughs> that being said, I forgot that I was sharing my screen. Look, I ain't going nothing crazy. You know, <laughs> I'm interacting. I'm interacting. Um, I got you. Hold up. So we've got the Adidas Continental in four colorways, navy, maroon, gray, and mist sun. It looks like you will cop all four. No, I'm not buying none of those. What are those, like, bootleg power phases? Like, Pretty much. That's, like, what the power phase was. I mean, on a bootleg. That's, yeah, these, are the, these are the shoes you get the day after you get out of prison. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not here for these at all. Uh, I'm going to have to definitely pass, Listen, hard pass. I'm happy because after coming from ATL and putting significant resources into Uber... I am happy <laughs> to not have to worry about buying anything. So this that. is good. This is a good, you know, good week here. Uh, Nike Zoom Pegasus 35 Turbo Atmosphere Gray. Mm -mm. What say you? Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. I can't do it. I, I mean, it, if they're comfortable, I, I might be a go. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I won't buy those. I'm, I think this week I'm, I'm closed for business. For real. I mean, we've got... Scrolling through here, Adidas Ultra Boost ATR Clear Brown. Oh my I'm just going to keep going. Jordan I'm likes the new rotten of the year. I don't know if that's actually confirmed. Is that confirmed for the first? Is that coming out as well? Or is, they just, is that just I like a placeholder? I thought so. Um, but I'm not messing with those either. I don't care. At all. I'm not messing with those at Adidas, all. Adidas Pro Bounce Low Jalen Brown PE. So it's the Jalen Brown Adidas Pro Bounce Low. Negative. I, I, you know, I am trying different shoes. Like I did say today in the chat that... I may do the the KD um, ID oh, yeah. if it if it if it gives I'm, I have to go try them on first just to make sure that you know it's got enough ankle protection just because you know the uh, fit was very similar to me like the Jordan thirty two you know how it was like real snug oh. but yeah so it was yeah and if the if the shock isn't there tongue. it's not an open tongue you know what I mean so it yeah. is able to get your foot in there once it's in there it's in there so um. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try them all, man, because I think that you could do a lot of cool things. Actually, I saw I was at Myers, a, a local grocery store here. I mean, I think they have them all over the place. Um, I was at Meyer a little bit ago before the show started, and this guy had a pair of like red, black, and white ones. Um, I was like, yeah, they're all right. So you know, I might, I might check them out. You know, we'll see. All right, bet. Uh, Nike Air Force 270 Utility Sequoia. Hell no, nah. these things mm -hmm. look like. Something that a, a big dude in your neighborhood walks around named Junior picking up refrigerators and shit. Uh, I'm not. I'm not on those. Heard a lot of good things about the 270s, the Air Force, but it's not for me. A Kardashian booty on them. <laughs> Jordan Trainer, STG, Deep Royal Blue. Mm, I mean, yeah, I might start golfing. I mean, I, I'm going. I'm going back to an industry where we used to golf quite frequently. Um, I got so, my pairs, so you know I might, I, I might, I got to get a pair of Jordan golf cleats. So it's I got them. Like, I got a pair of the nines. I got a pair of the sixes. I got a pair of the threes, and I got a pair of thirteens. So I think I just, uh, I think it'd be dope if they came out with a bread four, and that, and that would all, be all I needed. <laughs> Listen, out of cop. Um, Air Jordan five satin bread. Can we just show these? This is the pass for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not for everybody. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna be really stingy with my purchases. I say that now. Hopefully, you yeah, know, it's tough, it's man. I said the same thing, uh, and then I was out here like, oh yeah. No, but I'm doing well. I, I didn't cop the 12s. I'm sorry, I didn't cop the 11s. I definitely cop those Yeezys. Um, so there are a lot of things that I'm passing on. Where maybe a year or two ago, I would have been like in that mode where I'm copping everything. But I find that as real estate is, you know, becoming scarce, that I'm being a little bit more cognizant of my purchases. And not just copping a cop, you know, actually buying something that I like, I want to wear, et cetera, et cetera. So, right. hey, PGH kid, $20 make you holler? The wife and in the club, give me $20. <laughs> um, Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG PSG. Nope. 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 I never, I would never. It's not enough for me. I never rock them. I would never rock those. Those are not enough for me. basically a Cyber Monday with, with a, a red stripe on them. I'm straight. I don't. I don't wear the Cyber Mondays. They're sitting there gl glistening. I don't even think I put the Cyber Mondays in one of these things. Word. I got like. I think I picked like ten. Like most of my ones are in the clear cases, but mm -hmm. there's there's probably ten to fifteen pairs that didn't make the cut. So, um, and these wouldn't make the cut. 
Um, Beavis and Butthead, Tom Adidas, 3MC. That's all you. <laughs> That's silly. That's um, all you. Nah, I wouldn't rock them okay. things. Even though I like, no, Beavis and, I like Beavis and Butthead. Oh, same here. But yeah, I wouldn't rock not those. Enough to, not enough to get me to make the purchase. I used to, I used to, just, we used to crack on folks and say, you got Beavis and Butthead shoes. Like, kind of like them shoes yeah. underneath. You know how they had wore them like long black shoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't. I, I'm, nah, not sure I'm good on those. All right. And uh, Pharrell, Tom Adidas, NMB, Hugh, and the RD Blue. Those are kind of dope, man. They kind of like Captain America. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I've never had the opportunity to be able to buy them. So like, I've never gotten excited for them. You know, I don't Pharrell. check for them. I don't have any. Do you have any? Um, I do. Not of like of this stature. <laughs> 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 I got the ones that were more accessible. The ones that still hover around retail. Um, okay. After you know, after after market, what have you. Um, so I have, I would say, two off the top of my head. There may be one other one floating around there. Um, but yeah, these don't typically make it to the collection. Malik said he's not buying anything until the Concords come out. And Ooh, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I could do that because I got to get the red, the red twelves. Um, there's a couple other things coming out in there. I, I hope to pass on them chlorophylls, but that's next week, the or the week after, or whatever. Um, but I'm trying to pass on those. There's something else that's coming out. Oh, uh, zebra Yeezys. Oh yeah, I definitely got to double up there. I'd I'm be copping those. Keep the hell out of mine. I'm I know. I can, off. I, yeah, I know you just talk about <laughs> soliloquy about Kanye, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, those are all the. Leave me alone. I'll, I'll, I'll grab those. Hey man, I ain't, hey, I'm the one that's gonna. I, hey, <sighs> people can say, hey, I'm not like I'm not messing with what he's saying. Like, just because I'm wearing the shoes doesn't I mean that I have them. So coat. it's like, yeah, I mean, I have. It's my like airport 50. shoe. It's my beater. They're comfortable. Yeezys are comfortable. Yeah. And you know it is what it is, man. I I hope that he gets his stuff together, and you know, uh, I think he's so far gone. He might be, <laughs> he might be. So, is I that it? Keep digging a bigger hole. Um, Bape Tom Adidas three ST point zero zero two. No, no. Yeah, those no. are terrible. Just, just no. Yeah, can't no. do, can't do those. I can't get jiggy uh, with that. No. Man, so and do you do you want you want to do a gap? Um, I mean, I we should at least show it, talk about what it was and all that jazz. It's just you and me, so it's not really a right. gap. It's just like, do you like my shoe or do you hate my shoe? <laughs> all right, we're gonna. All right, we'll, let me go ahead. Watch out for the drop. All right, welcome to the gap. Um, but there's, you know, all of us aren't here. Sponsored by 8-9 Manufacturing Company. And shout out to Ma for reminding me because I was sleep at the wheel here. You know, when it's only two of us here, there's a lot more responsibilities that we have now. So, you know. Yes, but yeah, shout out to 8-9 uh, Manufacturing. Make sure you go ahead and check the description if you guys want. as There's 30% off. Uh, code in there you guys can go ahead and you know get some of their apparel i know that they were fresh out of sneaker con um so if you got a chance to go check them out at sneaker con here's 30 percent off so you can guys go ahead and you know, purchase some clothes there and get fresh that's it so um per special request from dan one-legged lister he asked me to introduce the gap um in my damn voice um i don't know if i've got it since it's been a long weekend but <laughs> we gonna give it a try all right so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to the gap Hey, it's Marcus. What's going on? <laughs> it's my favorite part of the show, primarily because I get to do most of the talking. The game is, is Gap, Gas, Ass, or Pass. Gas will get you two points. Pass will get you one point. Ass will get you no points. So today's theme is Halloween kicks. And now that we have pillows and jays, um, we can get a pretty decent gap. So what we'll do is we will have Marcus take Dan's gap. Hold on, he got one. I'll, I'll load it up. I, I That was he, his first choice, so I figured he could take it over. Yeah. Yeah, you, you give it to me. All right. Well, I got this one already. Yeah, yeah we'll toss you in there, too. But yeah, you can have his, though. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's... 
There's your All right. Answer. All so right. If you if you're looking at the screen, you probably realize that there's a bit of a theme. This is Halloween kicks, uh, with Halloween being on Wednesday, so Halloween theme. Um, that's what we're going with. And first up would be Kevin. Introduce your shoe. My shoe is the Paranorman phone posit. Now I know a lot of people don't mess with phones anymore, but I think this phone is a is a special phone. This phone, along <laughs> with the uh, the Galaxy, I think are phones that are kind of, you know, they what is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Fuck it. They're dope. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think it's a super dope shoe. Look at the, the glow on that thing. Look at the, the neon smoke coming off them joints. It's, it's just super clean, man. So, um, Paranorman, Paranorman phones. Yes. So I'll go first. Um, I think these are super dope. I own like 2.3 phones in my entire collection. Um, so clearly not a model that I love, uh, but a, a colorway and a design and a theme that I think is just super dope. Um, I've seen these in person. Jody has totally killed these. Um, and if there was a phone to cop, this would be it. So I will gas it. Yeah. What say you, Marcus? Yeah, it's a gas. I, mean, it's, I got rid of all my phones. I'm not really a phone guy. I had a bunch of them, but it's not my thing. I'm not a fan of how they look on my feet, but it's, it's a gas. If I had to have a pair of, of phones, this would probably be one of two that I would count. Yeah, same. Definitely the same. I, I, like you said, I'm not even sure what they look like on my feet because I can't tell you the last time I put a pair on. Probably 2007. Um, I think I put a pair on earlier this year. Yeah, not so, these though. But I don't care how bad it looked. I would rock these hoes, and it it would just I'll take the L. I'll have the dub, but I'll take the L. And I see uh, Q to Queen in nineties ago uh, talking about black people wearing uh, Yeezys. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to talk about that here mm-hmm. after uh, after the gap. So you know, I'll be interested in hearing how you guys weigh in and some of the questions that I have. Um, in correspondence with it so uh the chat the chat i'm, tra- I'm scrolling through um i see a gas two gas three gas four gas turn up which i might be gas <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I guess it's gas yeah i mean it's a you know it's a low turnout you know whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take that one i'll take it and then daniel Daniel, well, I'm next. He, I'm next. He sent no. He sent in his. He said oh. gas on the paranorman. Well, he doesn't count because if Marcus is going to take his shoe, he doesn't count. Uh, I mean, go ahead and let him and keep his shoe, man. I mean, we can go ahead and talk about mine. I don't really like the damn gap anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a big fan. I was. I wanted to go a whole different level and, and be like the nastiest Halloween candy. So I think you could have had some fun with that. But well, uh, I mean, they just, they just, there was a, um, a carry forward candy cane. I don't know if it was a custom or an actual release, mm. but that came out. I was, I don't really like candy cane. I mean, I I'm talking about, up. yeah, I'm just talking about like the shoe, no, like, or not, not shoe, just like the actual, the candy, actual candy. I had, to bring, I had to bring it back to sneakers though. The, uh, <laughs> the candy corn is probably the candy corn and them black and orange candies are the nastiest Ooh. candy of all time. That is the worst, but I'm not gonna lie. Like, if there's nothing there, I'll eat a couple pieces. Don't eat a lot, but I'll I'm not eat a couple pieces of, of candy corn. I'm not eating candy corn. I'm not eating uh, them black and orange joints. So candy corn to me is like the um, what the hell are those things called during Easter? The, the the marshmallow joints. The peeps. Yep, that's the equivalent. Like, nah, remember, peeps like, are all right. Oh, no, oh, no, peeps no, are no. peeps are all right. L- You'll get diabetes no. from pe- L- from peeps. No. F- F- them. Y'all don't, but, hey, do y'all mess with peeps? Y'all mess with peeps. Nah, no peeps. <laughs> yeah, y'all mess with peeps. No candy peeps. corn, candy corn, and uh, Tootsie Rolls are trash too. Damn, you going wait? What about the flavor joints? The fruities are good. Yeah, see, come on. Fruities are good, but the Tootsie Rolls nasty. Like you, you get the Tootsie Pop. The front, the the sucker part is 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 great. But as soon as you start hitting that Tootsie Roll, it's like straight to the trash. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Dukes. All right. Next one, we got Maul. 
Yeah, so I have the Nike SB Low, uh, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Um, the inspiration behind the customs that I just had made for me, and um, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a better a better shoe considering the theme. So there we have it. I mean, arguably one of the better SB Lows to date. Marcus, you go. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pass. I, I gotta pass. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just I don't know, man. It looked like a, a decoration or something for a haunted house or some shit. Well, it's 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 part of the culture, but okay. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. You know, I, again, I'm you ain't seen Coco, man. man? Damn. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't ever seen the movie Coco? <laughs> Who did I pick this gap anyway? <laughs> it was kind of like a like I said the candy, and then he said Halloween. I was like, all right, whatever. That's cool. Um, for me, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pass on these as well. I don't like dunks, um, but I like I like the like I like the colors. I like the you know the little characters. I mean, I was gonna I was thinking about buying the Kyrie uh, four uh, because I thought it it looked dope, but I just don't like I don't really care for this shoe as much. So I'm gonna pass on these. Uh, what is the chat talking about? I see some gases. There's a decent amount of gas. There's a couple of passes. Yeah. It looks like it's gas. I mean, it don't matter right now. So one, one. Let's say say it's a gas. That's what did more um sorry, Dan. Shoot over. Dan said I think he said gas on yours. You know, better. It's an he SB. Like, he like dunk. Right. Yeah, about to say it's an SB. All right. Moving right along. And am I going to Daniels or just going to Marcus? Um, whatever you have loaded. I mean, I, I got both I, of them because it, it auto loads like right. But it might be a big ass rendering though on Marcus's. But here's um here's Daniels. Um, it's a Freddy, not Freddy Krueger SB low. These almost don't look like SBs though. Oh, get the hell out of here with that! <laughs> <laughs> you, you, man, please. All right. Um. I had to pass on these two, um, just because they're just because they're an SB, and I have like, I think I have two SBs that are like this. The only pair of SBs that I like that I wear are my Jordan One Lance Mountains, and they're Jordan Ones basically. They're not even really, you know, this type of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass these. Uh, I'm gonna guess them. I, I, th I mean, if I again, yeah. kind of like the paranormal phones. If this was a a dunk that I if there was a dunk I was gonna buy. This would probably be the one. I mean, I, plus, I love Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, and all that. So I think that's a dope thing, dope shit. Well, he did pick these two though, so you know. Uh, yeah, I guess there's a. No, I mean, no, no, it's, cool. it, it's not a lot of options with some damn Halloween <laughs> shit. I don't even, it's I don't cool. even know what the fuck I picked. I did a damn search on Halloween kicks, and that's what the hell came up. It's cool. Sure, I, I mean, you know. Hey, shout out to Elvin. Oh, Dominican. Dominican. Okay. All right. Um, I'll gas these two. I ain't a hater. And um, these are some shits I would definitely rock. There was a Kyrie custom that floated around about a week or so ago that actually looked pretty dope. Uh, it's got the wheels turning here. So um, I'll stand beside these, and I'll, I'll use my second gas. All right. Kevin. So kind of. Do we want to talk? Um, Let's go, uh, Marcus. Hold up, his picture is super little. Two, four, six. So that's, that's the only pick I can find, man. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I I did all kind of search and more search and more search. That's all I could find. So, Mar uh, Marcus. Ma. Yes, sir. What are you What are you giving these? Well, uh, I don't see them. Oh, you don't got them yet. And Marcus ain't talk about them, so All right, my bad. I didn't, I didn't see oh, them. I, didn't know I, mean, I, I refresh my memory. These pumpkin Air Max ninety fives or um, sorry. Air Max ninety. Pumpkin uh, it's Air Max ninety. Yeah. No, nah, Camp Rock wrote ninety five, so uh, it was in my head. Yeah, I, and I don't, I don't know if this shoe is a. I mean, when I did a search on it, it said it's a, it's a ninety pata uh, home like grown pumpkin, so. friends and family. But these shoes don't. Whatever it is, if this shoe exists, I think it says the friends and family could be a, a custom or something. I don't know because I found a green pair. Pumpkin these shoes pie. Dope. 
you can call it what you want. I would rock the hell out of these before probably any other pair that have come up. I mean, um, it, it, y'all talking about hype and all this. This shoe is just a dope ass shoe. Plus, I love ninety. So, yeah. I mean, listen, I don't hate on these, but it's a pass. Number of reasons. One, it's a pass. And number two, I don't have any more gas. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, moving right along. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm going to echo the sentiment. Um, I, I think it's a it's a nice looking shoe, but I would think that if it were to come out and it would be like, say it was a GR, um, I wouldn't, like, I don't, I don't even go out and buy any of the uh, 90s at this point or whatever. So, yeah. Um, I do, I, I do have a pair that kind of look like this, but I don't ever wear them. Yeah. So, it's a pass. And then Daniel, That's he, sent in a pass. The, he sent in the pass. Hey, take that pass. And the chat also passed, so you have a unanimous pass. <laughs> so, that means... Quattro. Um, so, we have a tie between the Freddies and the Para. No, we don't. No, why not? It was unanimous. No, it wasn't. You didn't gas it? No, I didn't. Oh, you played that game. All right, well, Kevin, you win. Ha ha. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. No, I didn't pass because of that. I just Soft passed. Clap, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you Double. Y'all already did weekly, weekly pickups. I didn't get to show mine. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I'm, I'm going to set you up. Hold on. I'm going to set you up. Chill out. Chill out. How are you going to set me up, man? How are you going to set me up somewhere for what? All right, go ahead. Ooh. All right, so uh, I just got the one pickup. Which I think I did. I may have got some other shit this week. It's been a long weekend. I don't remember anything past yesterday. But anyway, uh, picked up KB's Hirachi. They just came in. I walked hey. in the door and they were sitting there. And I, I mean, I think these are dope. I cannot wait to rock them. I actually may wear them to work tomorrow. Still I waiting on my pair. They're kind of salty. Yeah, I mean, they came quick. I, have blood pressure. Yeah, I so, thought they would be no, like creating them. The They do, but the yeah, Air Forces and the Hirachis, they've they come super quick. Even her pair was the last to show up. She got hers like I don't know that three days before her event. Um, so I'm just patiently waiting, you know. Uh, me and 25 other people, or 24 other people, I should say, um, just patiently waiting to get our MX 95s. Yeah, this this is dope. I'm this is probably only my second Hirachi, so pretty hyped about wearing it. Everybody talks about the comfort. I hadn't worn the other pair, but yeah, right. pretty dope. Shout out, shout out to K Black. I see her in the chat. Here, uh, we here. Gonna, we're gonna go ahead and slide in to topics. Mm, topics, and the first one we're gonna talk about is Mr. West and the Yeezy Wave Runner Seven Hundreds that are sitting or i don't know if they're still sitting they might still be sitting but as of yesterday they were still sitting and you can see this tweet from matt powell 24 hours later the easy boost 700 mov still not sold out this is going to be a problem for adidas um what are your guys thoughts on this do you think that this was just a super gr and you know that's why i couldn't sell out or do you think that kanye's social um, and political statements have left a bad taste in people's mouth and they're not buying them. I think it's twofold. I think that his mouth definitely wrote a check that he can't cash, but I also think that the production numbers were a little bit higher than what they should have been. Um, while it's a dope colorway to me, it's not something that will necessarily resonate with everyone. Um, and you... They fake sold out, right? They pulled right. them and they pulled they pulled the sneakers where they they just shut it down for a second and like all oh, sold out and then they throw them back up there to see if that you know it'll generate some sort of a thirst and and, and demand and, and try to get them sold out there. Um, I don't think honestly that he's dug himself enough of a hole in the community to where people won't buy his sneaker if it's limited and or a good product. Um, so I think this is more so happenstance with this particular release than it was with you know everything going on with kanye because the butter still sold out even though there was a shit ton um so the 350 definitely sold out I, I don't i don't think it has anything to do with his antics what about you marcus what do you think i just think that uh for one the yeezy hype has kind of faded regardless if he would have 
did or said all the things he's done recently, I think that it would it was getting to a point, and we spoke about this before, that it was going to die off. I think they've oversaturated the market with different versions of Yeezy. You know, I, I just think the hype is faded for anything with the Yeezy stamp on it at this point. And it's really time if they want to make a name for themselves again, it's time to scrape, scratch everything they got and start over from the from the top and do something different because the stuff they're releasing right now is just trash to me. I mean, but I think I, 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 the colorway. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I like the color. I like the colorway too. How what? much did it run you? How much did these run you? Um, I played the fifth. Uh, but I pay retail, so okay. Well, <laughs> retail is three hundred plus. <laughs> so I mean, that's my point. Like the cost of it is pretty high as well. To not have that sort of demand or that limited production, the price tag on is too high. If it was at a two fifty price point, do you think it would have sold out? Yeah, I mean, no. th- now see, they did sell out on Yeezy Supply. Yeezy Supply came out at like three, four in the morning, I think. And they sold out, or they had a 10 and an 11 left when I woke up in the morning. So I was like, all right. And then I got on Frenzy, and because uh, if if you if y'all don't have Frenzy, make sure y'all get it, because um, it allow you to mm-hmm. get access to certain drops that you may not quite know about. Um, but I think I forget who dropped, kind of before uh, Adidas dropped, and I was in there and it said, pay with Apple Pay, yes, sold out. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, damn, like these things is going quick. And then um and then Adidas came out and I'm sitting there and I'm like, "All right, well, I've never won on Adidas. Adidas will keep you on online for hours and hours and still not give you a pair." So I was like, "All right, you know, I was feeding the baby, so I just kept hitting the hitting the uh the phone and then it came up like you can buy them." I'm like, "All right, well, let me go ahead and let me get a 12 and a half." I ordered a 12 and a half. It Everything went through. Everything was cool. Uh, I got the uh, tracking today. Should be here Wednesday. Um, but you know, I, I like the shoe. They're comfortable. I do like. I talk shit about the seven hundred, the first ones when they first came out. And then after a while, I got a pair, and I was like, oh, I kind of like these things, and they're comfortable. Um, and I don't think that you know what he what he's saying. I don't think that me wearing his shoes doesn't mean that I agree with what he's saying because I definitely don't. Um, I think that if we were to, you know, look at that, then anything that is said by Nike or Adidas or whatever, like, I mean, you wouldn't wear any Adidas because Adidas is actually making his shoes and they don't have any plans Mm -hmm. on not pushing Kanye. So I think uh, when a lot of people say, well, how are you going to buy these and buy this? And and I'll I'll come out, I'll come with the same, the same uh, rebuttal. You, you're going to keep uh, using your iPhone. You're going to keep using your Android. You know, these people are working for pennies. You know, the, the shoes, too, is basically slavery over there. But you legitimize it because you don't see it. But when Kanye's over here saying whatever, whatever, and it's affecting you, then you have a problem with it. You know, like, people have, you know, controlled righteousness. You know, that's fine. You can You can have that. But... I'm going to, I guess I'm going to turn the blind eye the way everybody else is with everything else. You yeah. know, like my thoughts are my thoughts. Right. Um, I do so. feel like a hypocrite. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult because of my passion with sneakers, the connection there. And the fact that, you know, I've separated my personal feeling and sneakers for a long time. Hence the reason why I have LeBron's in my collections despite <laughs> hating him his entire Miami run. Um, so, um, I don't know. I played, I played the fifth on this, I guess. Hey, shout out to the camp out. Yeah, I mean, Super like, chat. When, I, when I see Q, I know Q has a, um, has a, a big opinion on this, but, you know, it, it is what it is, man. I mean, like, people, you know, rock what you like. If you like it, and then it's yours at that point. Um, you know, it, Hey, camp out. That's it. Thanks, Shout brother. Out to camp Thanks, out. Kate brother. Black, tone of my voice, the whole breakdown. Thank y'all. I had to write y'all name down. Um, but yeah, you know, well, let me see what she say. So I said, I'm so proud to see what so you're, you're saying. What, you're what saying. that you're. What 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 what? what Q? I, I'm, I'm interested. Not, I'm not, yeah, I'm interested in, in in knowing that. Let's see here. So what did her soul say? say what you... 
Sorry. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's right. I think it's more geographical. Um, you really don't see people wear Yeezys here. And I think that a lot of times, like, if I wear a pair of Yeezys out, someone's going to say something, usually. Well, I think it depends, right? So there are, I would say right now, the majority of pairs are, like, leaders out here. Like, if I see someone in a pair of Yeezys, I'm, I'm no longer like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that that wow factor is definitely worn off. I mean, if it's a turtle dove or a moon rock, you know, one of the originals, then maybe it still has that allure. Um, but outside of it being like part of the Louis flab or, or part of the, uh, the Nike, you know, a Nike easy, um, that are, it's, it's just worn off. It's not there. But you, you, you never, you never see them here. Like ever. I mean, outside of a, a sneaker event, you'll never see people wear Yeezys. So when you do see him, it's just like, damn. Or like, you know, even with a DB, like you rarely see a DB unless it's uh, an event or whatever. Uh, she says she's happy that you're calling yourself a hypocrite. Uh, um, listen, if if I if there's leaky language, if I say something, you know, I, I'll call myself out in a heartbeat, you know. So. But I mean, like, you know what? Like, hey, it's what you want to wear. Well, and if somebody wants to challenge your, your thoughts on why you're wearing it, I mean, because they want to put their views on, you know, what you're doing. I mean, it doesn't really matter to, to no. be honest with you. You got, you got to separate the, the politics and the sneakers and stuff. I mean, it, you know, right. there's some situations where you can't, but with this one, I don't, I don't think it, it, it makes much of a difference. Not in my opinion, me personally, I'm not going to buy them. I think, you know, when I was buying the Yeezys, it was a hype thing, you know, and, and I, I'll admit, you know, I am a hype beast at times, just like everybody else is, even though most people don't like to admit it, but we all are. But, you know, right, yeah. when I was buying them, it was it was a hype thing, and now the hype has kind of died. And now I look back at them, and I'm just like, wow, I really wanted those shoes. I really like those. And I do that with a lot. I do that with clothes. I do that with many things that I have. You know, I look back, and, and, it, and it's kind of, you know, past this time for me, and it's the same thing. I mean, again, if they come back out with something that's dope, you know, I might jump on it. But I, I just think the main thing is the hype is down to resale, on most of the recent Yeezys within the last couple of years has dropped dramatically. And I think that, you know, the resellers don't go after these no more because they can't flip them and make any money. I think really, in my opinion, I think Off-White has taken over the resale market as far as sneakers go. And, you know, that's where the money is now. And that's why the Yeezys are not surviving. Right. And then uh, her soul said that she lives in Chicago and she rarely sees Yeezys too. So, you know, maybe, it's, you know, big cities too. Uh, and JP says, you know, ain't no rules to it. And I agree with that. Um, uh, I think you buy what you like. Um, uh, when people, I think what, what's happening to a lot of people is what you said, uh, Marcus, is that they see the value on stock X not being where it is and they can't go out there and spend, you know, a bunch or get a bunch of money back out of, you know, whatever your investment is. So now people think that they're trash or whatever, you know, like that. But for me it's you know, I got used to the shoe and then I started, looking at them I was like oh I like them and I put them on and they're comfortable so you know I'll continue I'll continue to rock them um but you know it, it is what it is I mean, man that's and that's the thing about sneakers you know you you like what you like I'm, I've, I've gotten beyond that point of you know calling somebody else a shoe trash <laughs> you know I, I've got to the point I hate that word now I'm not gonna yeah. say anything is trash a- you know and and we use it, but I, I that's one of those sneaker words I want to take out of my, my vocabulary Same. because one thing that may be trash to me may not be trash to somebody else that's wearing it, you know. That's and true. I know how I feel when somebody come on my post and call something that I have love for trash. Yes, it kind of pisses me off, which we all are entitled to our own opinions. But you know, that's just Same one of those this. words it's, that yes. we need to take out of our vocabulary. If you don't like some something that you see, if you don't like something that somebody's wearing, you know. <clears throat> Just don't comment, don't like, you know, but you don't have to go on somebody's page and call something trash because I'll never do that on anybody else. Right. But that's, that's me. I wouldn't do it. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter to me when someone says it on my page, to be honest. I normally would just respond back with like a one word answer, like, cool, <laughs> thanks. Like, right. Or an okay emoji, like, because at the end of the day, I'm going to rock what I want, when I want, how I want. Exactly. And exactly. I've always been like that back when my page, you know, well, still now with the Curry's, the Kyrie's, Kyrie's the wave now. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't have that same effect, but the Kobe's, you know, like I always had an array of, of different, different styles, different, 
right. uh, signatures or whatever silhouettes, you know, however you want to categorize it. Um, and it, it will, you know, it'll appeal to some people and, you know, some others it won't. Around NBA uh, <laughs> finals time when I start rocking curries, woo, some people that get big mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for for me, like, if I post something and someone comes to my page and they say, you know, these are trash or whatever, I don't care who you are, you getting blocked, if not cussed <laughs> out on top of that. Um, I don't need that negativity. And then some people get too comfortable with, you know, who they are or whatever, and then they feel like they can say whatever and they think it's funny. People take things differently. Like, I'm... I could say that I guess I'm sensitive or whatever. I don't even, I don't make the shoes, but if I buy the shoes and I spend the money, you don't have to like them. You don't have to say, Kev, those are dope, whatever. Don't say nothing. But you come in, you go out of your way to say something wild, block. Like, no, this person so there's has a difference, no, right? As no long pictures as it's, yet. If it's about the shoe, whatever. If it's nothing personal, disrespectful, if it doesn't, you know, it's not a personal attack on me or someone else. Right. You know, on my page, and then I could care less. You have an opinion, it's whatever. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. It just doesn't bother me. But I think that people, I think that it it is a form of disrespect because, like, I would you wouldn't go up to somebody and say, "Man, your shirt is trash," and you got that shirt on and you out. Would nobody say that to you? You know what I'm saying? And not yeah. expect to. They're not gonna say it to you in person with them shoes on. They're right. Not gonna say right. 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 I mean, and then, I, and then I, you I go to their page. That. You yeah. go to their page, and you see Block, the majority of their stuff is trash. But I don't go there. You know, I don't come to McDonald's and knock the fries out your hands and say <laughs> get back to work, Nick. Like, <laughs> but that's the, that's the point, right? So if you go to their page and you can clearly see that they have nothing whatsoever that even touches anything, you know, your worst pair, then. I'd rather make them feel stupid personally, like, oh, cool, or thank you, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just block them because I don't need them next time. <laughs> next time I post a picture of the same shoe, I don't need you coming back and saying, these is trash. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look at your little dirty ass DMX runners. Shut up. Right. Like, again, <laughs> if it's something crazy negative and, you know, they're cursing or. It don't even have to be crazy slur, negative. It just has to be nah. a tent of negativity. And nah, then, that other stuff, I just, you know. <laughs> I hate when a nigga comment on, on one of my combos and shit, and I go look at his page, and he got a combo on with some ashy-ass socks with them little balls hanging off the motherfuckers. And yes. Like, coordinate with his shoes and shit. Ashy-ass yeah. legs and ankles with big knots on them motherfuckers. Man, get the hell out. Well, you got a fake Perry Ellis outfit, bro. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Oh, all right. So, anyways, I think that's all. That's all for uh, for Yeezy. We're gonna move right along uh, in the sneaker YouTube, and you know, I guess it's kind of similar to kind of what we were talking about before. Like, what are your thoughts on sneaker YouTube? Um, like, for me, I watch a lot of YouTube, and I watch a lot of sneaker YouTube. I watch a lot of nerd shit too. Like, I watch conspiracy theories and all that other shit. But that's neither here nor there at this point. We're gonna talk about you know like sneaker reviews like i see a lot of repetition um with sneaker reviews and you know if people like doing it that's cool you know i'm not gonna hate your hustle i'm not gonna go on there and give you a thumbs down because i just seen eight other people do the same shoe because you know a lot of people are just trying to find their their wave or whatever um but i see i hear a lot of the same terminology where you can tell that they watch the other persons and they just basically copied it you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, and it happens in shows too. Um, I guess the, the 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 real thing I want to talk about when it comes to this is, you know, sneaker YouTube shows. Because we're a sneaker YouTube show. We're not a podcast. We are not on any podcast platform um, yeah, currently. We kind of are, but we don't have active. <laughs> yeah, well, we're 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 not really. We're not. Well, I would say we're we're a YouTube live show. Right. Um, and then you see a lot of uh, YouTube live shows pop up and I'm not hating on any of them because I think you have to start somewhere. Um, but I think that when you get to comparing, you know, certain shows, you have to look at, you know, the type of um, preparation that it takes in order to do a show on YouTube. Like you have a lot of people that come on here and they don't have anything prepared. Like they're just going there and, you know, they talk about whatever. And if that works for them, then great. But. 
you know, like there's there's shows out here that spend I know a lot of time and I can tell that they spend a lot of time in the preparation of their shows. Like I give I'll give a shout out to uh, Sneaker Box Podcast because I know Caesar does a lot of prep to, you know, put that show together and have the the, the segments and everything changing. You know, some of the stuff that, that he was doing his show, you know, that's kind of what I looked at when we were kind of putting this show together as far as the having, you know, having it organized. Um, now, we, you know, we didn't copy, you know, what they do, but I wanted to make sure that we had some type of, you know. Structure. Yeah, some structure. And then, you know, and I know Marcus, you ain't going to like this one, but um, I'll give uh, kudos to, to even the sneak disc. Um, you can tell that they put a lot of time into their into their show. Um, but, you know, there's other there's other people that I just feel like, man, you know, don't come and say that you're better than us and you don't put the, the same right. effort into it. And I'm not saying you can't do it, but like, come on, man. Like, and you know, the, the, um, the camp out, uh, yeah, the, the breakdown. breakdown, they, you know, they put in a lot of effort into right. the show and it's tough. It's tough. To you know, put... their preparation is on key. Like, and, and Mike is, is a genius behind it. Right. Right. And, you, you know, know, I give, you know, I give kudos, I give kudos and shouts, you know, to, to, you know, anybody trying to do it. And if, a lot of these shows, like if you want to get better, you can just reach out to them and they'll teach you. Actually, I reached out to um, Sneaker Files because I wanted to learn how to do like overlays and stuff like that. And he pointed me in the, uh, Eugene pointed me in the right right direction. And um, you know, I'm I'm grateful for that. And then you know, I think uh, well, Skinny hit me up and he asked me how to do it. And you know, I try to point him in the right direction. So I think that you know, you're going to see some, some progression in some of these shows, but there are some other shows that I'm just like. Well, just to kind of like when you, when you mentioned sneak this and you said how I, you know, how I feel about it, I don't, I don't watch it. So I don't mm-hmm. have any feelings about it. The only time I've been aware of the show most of the time is when somebody sent me something that was said on there. Right. I don't, I don't watch the show. The couple of times I've tried to watch it. I just, I don't, I can't get down with, with just their content. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, the sound quality is great. The production of it is great. All that stuff, I applaud them on that. I just don't. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. I, it, I can't watch the the hosts. I can't watch what they talk about. You know, or whatever. That's right. just me. I don't take nothing away from them. I don't. I don't take anything away from anybody. My thing is, I have channels that I subscribe to right. on YouTube, and that's pretty much what I watch. Every once in a while, I may see something else that I'm not subscribed to pop up, and I'll go and check it out. But for the most part, the breakdown, full size run, um, you know, uh, those are pretty much my my only sneaker panel shows that i watch i don't even really know if there's any more and if, if well i mean there are but i don't really watch them those are what i watch those because that's what i relate to and i can you know i can get down with what they're saying i, I i'm not going to watch a show where i'm going to disagree with 90 percent of the content that's coming out so right. that's why i stick to just a few shows that i watch but saying that i think sneaker youtube is great i think it's you know because of that, because you can't pick what you want to watch, because right. you can't choose who you want to support or whatever. That's what makes it great. It's it's a lot of content that's out there that's not good, and then there's a lot of content that's great. And I'm I tend to focus on what I believe is the great great stuff, you know. And those two are my top shows. And then I've got my favorite people I like to watch, you know, T Ward, Mike, Mike Rich, Rich, you know, and a, a handful of other people. Yes, yeah, Skip, Shemini. you know, um, exactly. So I, I love where where Sneaker YouTube is, and I love the growth that it has because, you know, the sneaker community is kind of, in my opinion, it's not in a great place right now, you know, and I think we need some great positive shows like we're seeing from, from those channels to, right. uh, to keep thriving. Right. I, I mean, in regards to that, just kind of piggybacking off that last statement, when we talk about like how to be push the culture forward, so to speak, that's a common phrase that's used or how do we get it back? And, you know, it, it really comes back to, you know, like our platform and those who watch us, the people who are just really into it for the intrinsic reasons, not necessarily for the monetary or, or the, the, you know, the clout and things like that. So, you know, as we progress and, you know, Seeker YouTube becomes, I guess, a little bit more organic or grassroots, or you start to see the, the pull through, right, on some of the startup shows that are really just about the culture of the sneakers, then right. I, I think that will, will take precedence and, and, and really then you'll be able to grow and, and take the, let's call it market share, for lack of a better term, of, of sneaker YouTube. Right. 
And yeah. I forgot to mention that I do watch Talking Kicks. I don't want that to come off like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, I watch I watch Talking like Kicks. That. Um, you know, they're you know they're our brothers. Um, but like actually, I was I was I was watching Sneak this, and you know he Greg made a lot of sense, and you know he did a show by himself, and I'm like, bro, I don't know how you do a show by yourself. I mean, he, he did it though, and he did a, I thought he did a good job. Um, but he was saying stuff about like opportunities, and how you know if one show gets opportunity that doesn't mean that you know fuck why didn't we get that opportunity that's actually good for us that's good right. for people you know in our shoes because then you have an area where you can you know you say all right well they're doing this maybe their competitors are going to be looking for a show or maybe you know and i think what he was kind of alluding to like people like you know full size run like i don't really put them on the same level as us because i think that they're professionally produced it's like like a real tv show to me like i think with us it's kind of like you know it's more like it's it's about us we're the culture you know what i'm saying now, i'm not saying that welty and and trinidad and um is it brandon brandon dunn i'm not saying that they're not part of the culture i just say think that i think that they're out of reach they like, have a different perspective there's a different lens that they're looking right. through when right. it comes to the culture. So it's more marketability. It, right. They're, I don't want to call it a tier, but we're in the trenches. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think that it's like, and I don't want to relate. I, I'm going to leave it alone because I, the only thing I could think of was be like porn. Like, you know, hey, well, yeah, you want <laughs> music, this kind music. where I, I everything's was... airbrushed or do you like, no. like the shit that looks like it's you can not... go out there and do yourself? All right. Well, <laughs> let's, pull, let's pull it back and <laughs> let's think of more like, like the music industry, right? So you got like your mixtapes and stuff like that versus things that um, are professionally produced. Um, and then second or third albums where you fell in love with particular content because it resonated more with what you go through as opposed to something that a multi-platinum, you know, multi-million dollar, uh, you know, artist is now talking about, you know? Right. I see, like in the camp I said, was that the camp where I just saw it said, uh, yeah, full size run takes away from the organic feel of shows like ours. Right. I, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, it also brings attention to shows like ours. You know, yeah, I can see that they're too. On a, they're on a more uh, a larger scale. They're on complex. So you have more people who are going to go to Complex and check them out. And once they see them, they're going to be like, wow, that's a sneaker show. They have a panel. Let me see who else has something out there. So I, I don't think it takes away. I think it actually adds and builds because it brings more attention to what we're doing. They may not be the same. They may not. You know, every 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 show has somebody different. I mean, like me, Kev, Maul, yeah. and Daniel, we all look at things from a completely different perspective. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, every show can't have that. Every, every show has to be different. And I, I appreciate what they do. I think Trinidad brings, I think he kind of, you know, brings the middle ground to, to what they do. Well, he's, you know? he's definitely a huge part of that. Oh, yeah. I think that, uh, I think the show got better, honestly. I mean, I, I liked yeah, I Rich, agree. but I, I thought that there was, um, there was animosity, I felt, between maybe Rich and Welty, where Rich was like up here and Welty, Maybe like I thought he treated well. T I mean, it, it just felt kind of awkward to me. But I like how Trinidad is able to kind of get in there and like he's basically acts like he was the one in there from the, from day one. So I do I do like their show. Uh, my favorite part of their show is drip flip or skip. But we'll talk about that <laughs> in another show. Um, but, but yeah, you know, like no, you know, I, I'm I'm happy for anybody that that comes out here and they. Um, they, they try their hand at it, um, you know, and I think that we all help each other. I think that, you know, rather than start beef with each other, you know, there's things that, you know, hey, if if I don't know how to do something, I'll reach out to somebody so I can figure it out. I'll go and try to make things better. Um, and I think that in order for a show like to start up and to keep going, I think that you have to see growth. I mean, when you look at our show from the beginning until now, I mean, you can see significant growth, and I hope that the show that you see today isn't the same show that you're going to see, you know, a year from now. So, you know, I like that there's a sneak this. I like that there's a sneaker box podcast um, because you get to see some of the different things. I mean, some incremental changes. They like, oh, they're doing that. All right, cool. You know, we need to. You know, it's a it's like a healthy competition, and I love that about um, the sneaker YouTube. 
And let me, let me one more thing I want to address the camp out because he's he's vocal tonight. So I gotta I gotta gotta hit him back. You know, he he said if you're not at a camp out hunting for your shoes and living a life life, how can you speak on it? I've never in thirty years, thirty plus years, I've never camped out for a shoe. Right. But you've hunted. You've hunted. Like everyone and, has had Okay, that. but my, my hunt today is completely different from my hunt five, ten years ago. Completely different. I'll try to get a shoe when it drops, and then I, that's it. I mean, my hunt is completely different. I've grown from think back to the beginning. That, of the year. Is that, think back to what the beginning of the year when you were set, like, all right, I want to complete my candy pack, or I want to complete my DB pack. Like that's a hunt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It really wasn't a hunt. I walked into a store and the dude <laughs> had all of the damn DBs. It wasn't a hunt. I haven't did a hunt for a shoe in forever. I'll look it up, look it on StockX. So I, it's to me. I don't, I mean, I kind of disagree with what you're saying. There's not a, I've never camped out and I'm not going to. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm on that, I'm and on now, that level if too. I miss a shoe, if I miss a shoe, it's just like, okay, if I get it, cool. If I don't, cool. I walked in on those DBs and I grabbed them. I wasn't, I didn't say I'm going to hunt them. I found a few and I'm like, damn, maybe I can find some more. Walk in the next day, damn, you got two more. Let me grab those. But you I mean, invest, that's, that's it. But you've invested time. You've invested not, time in, into not, like creating I, relationships where people can reach out like if you're looking for something you could put it out there and you know you could you could get it so you you still invested time it's different but it's it's as, it's similar as, because as i grow older i don't invest as much time that doesn't it hasn't changed my passion and my love for sneakers it's just it's not something that i'm going to invest a whole lot of time in i mean i can tell you now i probably look at StockX maybe once every couple of days hey you, shout out to Robert Deere for the twenty-five dollar donation. Hey now, I go on sneaker pages every. I, I barely go on IG. I post. Or I go on there and I like my friends' pictures, and I move on. I mean, it's not that I don't have a passion. It's just that there's no hunt. There's none of that stuff in me anymore. So, yeah, I don't. I've never. I've never camped out for a shoe. I think I missed that. That um, you know, in my hiatus in the sneaker. Um, it's also about location because. As yeah, you, I mean, you know, in Ohio, you, you really don't. You don't. Prevalent. Like, I'm from Jersey, and I've camped out, what, maybe two times in New York and a handful of times in New Jersey. Like, it, it's demographically, it, there's a, it's a different a different animal. It's a different beast. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a different thing in New York. I mean, that's, yeah, if I lived in New York, I would probably stuff. Would. Right. Like, I mean, y'all get shit work camping out for well, that's that's the other exactly. that's the part of it. Like the Serena's, the Blazers came out, right? Like it came out in one spot in New York. That's it. <laughs> Robert Deere, what's your uh, what's your uh, um, IG? Um, I was looking for something. I can't remember. Is that one idea? I don't know. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh, oh, all right. Let's try to think of if I picked up anything like "quote unquote" from the hunt because I feel like you're always on the hunt. You're always on the look. There's always something you want to circle back on. Yeah, I mean, we look every day for stuff. Like I hit StockX, and I'm like, I hit, I have a filter. I go and I'll be like, twelve lowest ass men's mm -hmm. boom, and I just go through the entire thing, and then I see, hey, you know, maybe something pops up. Um, but right, like you know. like Marcus, you circled back on Air Maxes. Like you were on a mini hunt for Air Maxes. Like. I didn't camp for him. I just went somewhere that's and found him online. There's camp. There's, <laughs> there's all different. There's levels of the shit. Like there's different. I mean, it you know, is. It is. But I, I don't. I don't think because you do something different. Every every region, every area is different. Just like I've said many times, a lot of stuff in Dallas sits. Now we don't get that exclusive, limited type shit that you guys get in New York. But we do get some stuff that that may not be GR, that you know have has pretty easy access for me. You I don't think so either. By the way. I don't, <laughs> I don't camp. I don't, I don't put in. I hear sneakers that if I miss, most of the time I'm just like, eh, and keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. But everybody's level of of passion and commitment to this is different. That's why it's kind of right. like saying well, the, the earlier subject we talked about, calling something trash. You can't judge a person based on their level of commitment of what they will and won't do to get a shoe. That doesn't that doesn't add more or take away more, less from that person. I see so many comments, you know, about how you should do things and how you shouldn't do things. And it just annoys me. Everybody does things differently. You know, again, it could depend on where you are or whatever. It's, it's many different reasons why things are done differently from one person to the next. The game's you don't changed. discredit, you don't discredit somebody else for doing something differently from the way you do. It. And I'm not, I'm not addressing that at camp out. So don't take it that way. No, no, no. Just saying in general. Well, I, 
the game has changed significantly. If I think about like when I when I was collecting in two thousand two, um, to when I you know went through my heavy phase, to just like three years ago, um, to now, right? There's so many different advances, whether it be online, the bots, um, the email raffle system, the in person raffle system, Go StockX. You know what I'm saying? Like, so as things evolve and things change the method of how you go about it will evolve, but ultimately it all comes back to the same approach and the same ideology. Shout out to J JC Kicks. Thanks, brother. Man, I can't tell you the last time I went to the mall to pick up some shoes before 12 o'clock. Stand in line, I walk in. Oh, I'll go. Let me get my shoes. I I'll be and there at 10 o'clock. Like when the LeBron's drop, uh, you know, if it's not on the app, I mean, it camp go. like it depends on your definition of camping, right? Like for me, camping doesn't have to necessarily be overnight. You might just get you might get some all super early and spend you know two or three hours before the store opens to make sure you're the first person in line. Like when the Kyrie Three Mama mentalities came out, I wasn't messing with the sneakers app. Like I wanted that joint right away. I wanted to make sure I secured my pair. So I went into work late and I stood in line at like seven eight o'clock to make sure that I was the first person that when the doors open, I was going to get my pair no matter what. Right. I feel that. So. Well, then, all in all, I guess, I guess I'm just old. You know what I'm saying? Because I've, I've gone to places. Ain't no guessing line, about that. Ain't no guessing. <laughs> and seen a line, and I'm just like, you know, I know I can get in that line, and I know I can get the kicks I want, but right. I'm not going to stand in a line, dude. I'm just, I'm not. You know, JP said something about Black Friday. I ain't doing that either. I'm going when Black Friday's with a kick off. Let's say kick off at six o'clock. My ass is going at eleven. When all Friday's the motherfuckers are left. Now. Black Friday is on whatever. Uh, I used to whatever do Black Friday, but like yeah. now you just order online right. uh, on Thanksgiving. Exactly. Well, one um, day and plus, it's not. Early deals, like... It's not worth the problems that could occur um, on Black Friday to get a piece of shit TV for five dollars. And you know, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not here for that. Uh, but you guys want to move on to the third. Let's get it. I, and I want to sum this up. You know, like I'm not throwing shots at, at anybody um, as far as, you know, YouTube or whatever. Um, you know, I think we're all here to help each other out. Um, you know, I like to see anybody grow. I like to see people, you know, get uh, accomplished, you know, whatever their goals are. So, you know, shout out to everybody, you know, Sneaker YouTube. Um, also, shout out to uh, the homie Skip. Make sure I go check out my homie Skip Goes Hard. Skip Goes Hard. Uh, homie uh, Shumanati. Um and then uh, Sniper Jones, man, that's that's that dude works hard. He Come works on. hard. Uh, so yeah, topic number three, and this one is uh, is an article in Vogue that said Off White is now the most popular brand in the world, beating Gucci and Balenciaga. Let's go to Marcus because Marcus is the big Gucci Balenciaga brother, and he's been buying Off Whites, man. Yeah, I, you know, I've I've been fortunate. Blessed, lucky enough to get three pair off whites. You know what I'm saying? And you know I own some Balenciaga, so uh, I'm excited about this. I love I love the off white brand. I love what you know what they've done with it. I'm sure Virgil really has nothing to do with the shoes that are dropping here recently since the original uh, ten or whatever. But I, I I I love to see this surpass one of those bigger brands like Gucci and Balenciaga you know, or what have you. I, I think it's dope, man. It brings more attention to the sneaker community. You know, it makes people say, hey, you know, what 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 is this Off-White? And, it, and it's not just limited to these Nike kicks. I mean, Off-White does a lot of other things outside of the shoes that we're seeing. So I think it's dope. Would you would you, would you you wear a non-Nike Off-White tennis shoe? Yeah, I would. I would. It's a few of them that I've looked at that I thought were dope, and I said, okay, I would love to have those. I just again because I don't have that hunt and that look that looking out for desire, I just don't try to get them. But yeah, I mean it's a few I've seen and I'm like yeah, those pretty dope. I rock those. So what do you think, uh, Ma? Um, <laughs> well, it's it's funny because I, all right. So I was in Lenox Mall uh, in Atlanta this weekend, and I was walking through the Louis Vuitton store, and I saw a couple of of pieces there, a couple of shoes or what have you, and I was with my boy, and I I was looking at him like, you know when Virgil, when that releases, like, it's going to be bananas. And then I saw something around the gram today, I think it was from Kixie, where she's like, all right, well, you know, the other stuff's going to be good, become the GR. And then, like, the real luxury collabs, that's going to be, like, the real off-white, so to speak, where 
um there's now like another level to it when you start talking okay. about popularity beating gucci and balenciaga you put yourself in a different category right um you know you're, you're now targeting there's a different target audience uh, a different market that you are attracting you know what i mean so not everyone wears balenciagas because you know the price point whether it be because they you know don't know how to wear it so to speak um but i think in terms of virgil and his brand there's not going to be like the high end um the high end pieces or the you know i want to call it gr let's call it the more affordable pieces and then you know you'll have your nike collab which from a retail standpoint will now be you know really underpriced the resale market will reflect the actual like the, the real right. value right so like if he were to do a collab with nike again do you think that a jordan is going to be releasing at what was it, the 160 or the 180 price point or is that going to automatically going to be like a, a 400 dollars shoe you know what i mean so um yeah listen it's great you know what i mean to have that and to to feel like it originated so to speak within the culture um, whether that be just just fashion or within the sneaker culture with the collaboration with Nike and the original 10. Um, I think it's still, you know, kind of paves the way for other people who are up and coming. All right. I think that uh, basically kind of gets you more into high fashion as, you know, I, like I was never, I'd never get into Gucci or Balenciaga myself. Not saying that there's any problem with it, but um, I don't think that they had that attachment bridge like Off-White does where you, you know, you drop a Jordan, you drop a, a Air Max or, you know, something that I can kind of attach some nostalgia to and then kind of bring me over into it. Um, you know, now I get excited about off-white drops. Um, so I, th I think it's dope, man. Um, I, I think I think the great part of it is just a regular everyday brother just like us mm -hmm. is one of the most spoken names in fashion right now. I mean, you hear his name everywhere where right. you didn't you didn't have that. And, I, and that's that's the best part about it. And that that will open doors for other minorities to branch out into the big brands from Gucci, Louis, Balenciaga, what have you. You know, that's that's going to open doors for other minorities to do the same. You know, and that's that's we all win with that. Everybody wins. I wonder what his thoughts are on Kanye. That I'd like to hear. I like to hear what he says and if he has to be more selective in the things that he says because he's in the transitioning space. You know, he's kind of, he's blowing up. Did, you know, would he say something, you know, that would, I don't know, I guess kind of stop that or does he just kind of stay away from, you know, political and social? Um, it would probably be best for him to stay away from it. Yeah, probably. There's no, right, there's no reason for him to get involved in it, you know? It's not like he was vocal beforehand, true, to my knowledge. Um, so to start now, it doesn't really. You know, I mean, because they they had a fallen it. out. Their relationship was was strained, and you know, at the uh, Louis, you know, fashion show or whatever the runway, right? They hugged it up or whatever, and that was the last we seen or heard from that. And I think that's where we need to leave it at until Kanye gets himself together. Yeah, because I mean, like JP said, him and Kanye are one of the same. I wonder how I, it, I'd be interested to see what people would say if off white uh, like became the same thing as you know say Kanye because I think people probably getting tired of Kanye like off white is kind of like going up the hill you know what I'm saying like would people be still as outraged and not buy off white would they go to something else where they rationalize it like I do. Who knows? I don't think I don't think that people would stop buying off white because yeah, I don't think so either. I, yeah, I mean because the, the hype is, is is too is too big on it right now. All right, y'all want to move on to four? Let's get it. Okay, we're gonna talk about the Air Jordan 15 Dornbacher. Whatever. <laughs> is there anything that they could do to make this shoe cool? Um, well, they already did. They're making it a DB, so that automatically is going to give it a little extra yeah. attention uh, in the eyes of the community. I mean, I bought the I bought the PSNY, and part of it was, you know, just to have a 15. Um, I don't think I'd ever wear them, though. I don't like the look of the shoe. Um, I think it's disappointing. I think it's disappointing oh, that okay. they, they went from – they passed 11 – well, they've rumored the, uh, um, basically a, a re-release of the six. Right. 
but they're not doing that now. They're not. No, that was just those rumors. And now it's the 15. I think that it, it's disappointing. Like, I'm just curious what they're going to do, um, just because the way the silhouette is structured. Um, I think of, you know, like the Kubo, uh, mm-hmm. the Kubo drop and, and, and what they did there. And essentially, you know, they threw the, um, the logo on the tongue, but that was it. For the most part, it was pretty plain, right? All black upper. Um, well, I mean, I'm sure this is just like a like a unlocked character picture. It's probably going to be ridiculous colors. Oh no, no, no! no. Um, the, the the image that they showed, I, I I don't. That's not that's not the product. What I'm saying is, mm-hmm. they, visually, I'm trying. All right, well, what kind of details and aspects could you throw on there? Like, what right. can you do? Are you going to change the material? Um, are you going to make it like multicolored on the upper? Because they normally just like splash some color on the like on the midsole plate on, right. on the side, and because the top, you know, it's got that woven material. Um, you know, you've got like the PSNY that that drop, and, and you know that was kind of underwhelming because there wasn't much that you could really do with that. Right. You know. I mean, don't get me wrong; it would be dope if they could make this shoe look cool. Like, right. I'm all for buying the DBs. I mean, I I, mean, like, I own the 13s, and those are probably whew. low color. That's what I'm saying. So, like, low color there. It's a solid upper. Like, what are you really able to do to this shoe? To we, give it we, we, we effect. Are, we all knew that we were not going to get an 11. You know, so I don't, I don't, I don't understand a lot of people's disappointment. We we knew that. I mean, at some point, yes, we would get an eleven. But it's it's not time. But Maybe. I mean, you think about it, like it would be right around time to do that. Like they haven't done. I would have even taken a fourteen. Fourteen would have been uh, cool. The fourteen, a fifteen. Not a lot you can do with a fourteen, really. I mean, it's really not a lot you can do. But with I mean, 14. you, you I mean, can you do can a lot a, more with a fifteen. You can make a yellow yeah. Ferrari. You can make a Ferrari. You can, I mean, there, there's a decent amount of stuff you could do with the fourteen and make it look cool. Yeah, um, but it doesn't give it. Just making it yellow is not going to give it that signature mark like you have on most DBs where they have. But it would be dope. I mean, I, make I, a 14 I, I agree. I love a fourteen. I love a fourteen, and 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 I hope that that's one that comes out. I mean. I'm cool with 11 not coming out, and I'm I'm cool waiting, anticipating year after year if they're going to drop it. Mm-hmm. And I'm I mean I'm happy with the 15 dropping. I mean it's a shoe that that doesn't get love, and this is not going to make it get any more love. My only thing that I'm curious about, because it's a 15, and because it's one of the least loved Jordans between one through 23, do you release a super limited amount, probably less than any other DB that you've ever released, or do you make it closer to a GR and we can release more of them than you have any other DB? That's that's my that's what I'm interested to see how many of these will actually hit the market because of the shoe because every other shoe that's come out people love one through thirteen period All right. so being that it's one of those shoes that gets no love how do you release that that's yeah, what I'm that's what I, yeah that's why I don't I don't I don't understand why they would do that and Shumanati said that there's too many 11s already but I think 11s are probably the least made shoes outside of two well they made a decent amount of twos. Um, but you, people don't wear you can, twos. You could really fuck up an eleven. By, you could. You did last and week. I don't. I don't mean to disrespect <laughs> any of the right. Hashtag I don't no mean, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I don't mean to disrespect any of the kids that make these shoes or whatever. But when you hand a kid an eleven and say, "Hey, you know, have your way with it," eh, that might just not. And and who's to say they may have given a few kids these last few years an eleven and said, "Hey, go to work with it and let's see what you got." They just couldn't come up with shit for it that they felt like could be put out there because it's an 11. I mean, it's like one or two on most people's list of favorite shoes. Right. All right. That's it's definitely number two for me. Um, Jason said, uh, when has a DB ever been a GR anyway? Well, you think about it, uh, the 12 actually, well, I mean, it's sold out. However, you could get it for like $5 above retail. The, uh, the 13s were not much above retail. You probably get it below retail. The what was the one in between that? The sevens were I thought the sevens were dope, but they weren't yeah. going for crazy amounts of money. The tens, the tens were an easy yep. retail pickup. Yeah, is that you? Yeah, yeah that's me chiming. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, certain if people don't like them, they, you know, they they won't cost much on the after or on the aftermarket. So right. um, I hope people don't like them so I can get one when they drop on sneakers that day. I really hope they don't like them. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think that you know, when we get close, when we actually see the shoe, um, sh- I mean, if you could, if you could like a wave runner, you can like anything. That's the way I'm, I'm looking at it. Because I used to hate them things, and now I'm like, shit. 
Well, I'm going for my little walk with my daughter and my wife. I throw the wave runners on. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. So, do we got anything else on the 15? Um, no, I'm, I'm just looking forward to checking it out. And Yeah, yeah I definitely excited. want to see it. I want it to see it. my curiosity now that they decided to do it. I mean, I'm thinking back, like, the laser, uh, the laser 15s. That was, that was pretty dope. So, maybe you have something like that, but with color as opposed to just, like, the, the gold um, feel. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment until I actually see the, the finished product. She already said the best non-OG colorway in 11 uh he says 72 and 10 i'll go cool gray yeah cool gray's a dope um pantones too space jam yeah, yeah. space jam because they didn't <laughs> they didn't drop that's a got him that's, that's a trivia the, uh, question baby yeah that is the uh because i mean they didn't come out but they were there um but yeah we'll go into we're going to five and we're going to talk about you guys are going to talk here because i wasn't there <laughs> You know, I was sitting there riding the sidelines. I was in everybody's live, like, what's happening? What's happening? Who's fighting? Who's not fighting? You know. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was living my life vicariously through you guys. Um, so go ahead. Well, um, I spent uh, I spent most of my time in Atlanta in Atlanta. Um, so for SneakerCon, I got there a little early on Saturday. Everything was pretty much already set up. Uh, from the night before, we were able to um do some giveaways to the container store not necessarily for the show but uh kind of be a conduit for that um so that was really dope just going on stage and and doing some secret trivia with uh people around you know around the con or what have you um it was your typical vibe you know it was nice to meet up with everybody and just be in an environment where there's no malice and you're just you know chilling looking at kicks like you know typical typical con stuff um so yeah, I don't know, Marcus. Do you have a different experience or take? Oh uh, yeah, the actual. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I think I think uh, you know they always say the sequel is not as good as the original one, <laughs> and that is definitely the case. And I'm, I'm gonna start on my my negative side and not hit the positive side because I took a lot of great things away from it, but it was a lot of negative. I mean, my my whole sneaker con started out bad from jump. Got it to the airport late. Had to pay for more tickets and, you know, had to, you know, get on a different flight because I got there late and the damn airport said it was too late to bring my luggage, even though it was 45 minutes before the flight took off. So I didn't get that. I think they just wanted to get some money out of me. So I had to get get on a later flight, get there. Also, I couldn't, my rental car I had, I rented it for $132. Well, since I got there late, that went up to $300 because everybody was renting cars this weekend and they knew that they could price gouge. So that part went bad. Um yeah, it just it's, it started out bad, and I knew from that point it wasn't going to be a, a fantastic weekend like last year was, and I hate to keep going back to that, but last year was epic, and I don't think it'll ever be repeated. Mm-hmm. Um, then, you know, skip to – I'll come back to the sneaker con itself, skip to coming home, and, uh, yeah, uh, the coming back to the airport, Atlanta airport, is the worst ever in the history of life. Uh, <laughs> it's It's horrible. Uh, not only was like checking in bad, but uh, the worst thing was that I put my Apple Watch in one of the containers, and one of the security people decided they wanted to steal it, and they turned it off, and I'm not able to find my damn Apple Watch. Wow. So yeah, that what? kind of pissed me off. Yeah, you know right. when you check in the security, you got to take put all your little things in a little mm-hmm. bin. Right. I did that, and yeah, it they, my Apple Watch is gone, and they turned it off. You know, I went straight to find my iPhone, and the fuckers had turned it off. And it was wow. uh, it was on before I put it in there. So yeah, you know, I had some. I mean, it was more negative things that's, besides that. I'm, I'm gonna touch on a couple right. of those. That's that's not the con, like right. I mean, <laughs> I'm just talking about my ATL experience. ATL experience. All right. Well, I mean, that's as far as the con. That's not your day. <laughs> uh, not much, but I mean, <laughs> for you maybe, Ma. But this is my story, so let me tell it. Okay. <laughs> as far as sneaker con, it was kind of whack. In my opinion, it wasn't like any other one I've been to recently. And that everybody may, you know, some people, it was their first time and they enjoyed it. They had a great time. I've been to several and this was probably the wackest of the whack of all of them. I mean, there, there was just no buzz like there was in last year. There was no excitement like there was before. It was just kind of, eh, you know, but the best part about it, man, was 
the usual suspects. That that's the only reason why I got to this weekend. The usual suspects, and of course, you know my girlfriend who was with me to keep me from being ignorant this weekend. But <laughs> the usual suspects, man. I mean, I can't even name everybody who was there. I mean, if y'all on IG and y'all have seen pics, it was a huge, massive turnout. And we had a blast, man. Friday, sat, what was it Friday night? We went to uh, the little restaurant or whatever, and That's... I mean, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't enough room in there for all of us. I mean, we had two long tables filled, two and a half tables filled, you know, and people from everywhere. You know, it was it was so dope. I, me and my girl got tired. We went back to the hotel, and we said we were gonna come back out, and we planned on it. I'm old, goddamn it. I sat on the couch and fell asleep when I woke up. It was two o'clock. These motherfuckers were still partying, kicking yes. it, you know. Yes, we were. <laughs> I, I, I missed it. I hate I missed it. I'm mad that I missed it because the pictures and the videos I seen were epic. But then the next night, Saturday night, we chilled. We kicked it. We did it. You know, we did it big. I mean, and it was it was great. We had, we had a blast, man. I mean, so many cool-ass people, man. I mean, of course, my boy L, you know, I mean, that's, that's my guy now. Jay so... Beauty and Kicks, Adam Kicks, you know, Pig Venus, PG was <laughs> DG was here, <laughs> DeCarlo, Pig Venus. I mean, just <laughs> everybody. Q to Queen, my girl Bree came out with with Kev, Major Look, and June. I mean, man, it was it was amazing. You know, SneakerCon for me, and I said it all weekend. SneakerCon for me is the meeting up outside of it. I really only spent about four hours at the event. I mean, for the whole weekend, I spent about four hours there. It was about hanging out with these people and having a good time. I laughed so much this weekend. It's crazy. So, I mean, it's 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 a 50-50 for me. But, you know, the, the, the best side of it was all you guys who was there. I mean, KB Fresh Kicks, man, those pictures we took. Those, like, we was out taking pics outside at night. We was out there for about two hours with uh, Chris DeBees and Julian, all, you know, all my kicks dope. I mean, it was it was fun, man. You know, but like I said, it had its ups and downs. It kind of made me like, I don't want to do sneaker con no more. I just want to do meetups. I'm I'm done with sneaker con. I just want to do where we can get together and hang out, fuck some sneakers, Let's just hang out <laughs> yeah. and have fun. I mean, uh, I'm for well, real. Sneaker con. If you're talking about, you know, what it fucked up, it fucked up some commas. But um, <laughs> shout out to Lana K for the uh, for five dollars. Yeah. Yes, Call of Duty only... coming to YouTube soon. Oh lordy! If y'all got y'all gamer tags, set them out there. DM yeah. or add me. Yes, K KB was there. I didn't, I'm sorry. Look, I can't name everybody that was there, man. I mean, I can't. KB was a yes. I mean, both KBs were there. I mean, Jamie Patterson was there. Coaster Nostra was there. I mean, retro booming on that ass. Retro <laughs> booming. I mean, retro booming. That's my dude. That motherfucker there had me dying laughing. Yeah, we. He we called me out for being old. Be there. Like. My my experience outside of the con was completely different because I literally went out every single night from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like every single night up into and including last night. Um, so that part was dope. It was different. You know, typically I room next to the event. I didn't. So my experience was more centralized in my general location as opposed to what was going on at the event. And there's pros and some cons because I didn't get to shoot with anybody and you know everything right. of the sort. And there was a few people that I missed that I wanted to you know connect with a little bit more. Um, and then you know what I was doing at the show was a little bit different than um, you know what I, I would typically do in in other sneaker cons. I think the sneaker box podcast was missed. That was very very different to not see C's in them and be able to build and and, and, and chop it up and go on their show and talk you know just talk. Um, so there was definitely some things that were missing, but you know overall the event is the event you know what you're getting with sneaker con not much changes there uh it is about the people and and, and kind of just going out and having a good time um julian his boy caleb my boy jimmy steph smitty uh retro boom and oscar you know we took a trip to dan's house last night and it was a 45 minute ride and it was just it was a lit 45 minute ride just because of the energy and the people so um you know overall it I give it a thumbs up, man. And shout out to Mike Jenkins. Friday night went to uh, Tongue and Groove, which was probably one of the best nights. And um, Elvin, you can you can attest to that. Kit, you can attest to that. KB, uh, everyone who was there, it was just it was nuts, man. So um, you know, shout out to Mike for that. 
Yeah, yeah, I forgot Kit was there. That's that's my girl. We had so much fun. All we did was crack on each other the whole time. Of course, Unbox was there, you know, being his Earth. same old. Wait, wait. Ass I'm gonna now. give it to you. I'm gonna give you the mic. <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, Mike was there. That was, there. That, was yeah. that was Mike. Mike just eyes closed, head on the temple. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> It's the same dance he do every single time. Same thing, yep. You just get in his mode. Ain't nobody every else there. Uh, no, nah, but it was solid. From that standpoint, like I said, I had a good time going out. You know, I have um, some other friends that I grew up with uh, in Atlanta. Uh, so I got to link up with them. That's actually, you know, where the shirt is from. Uh, my dude, he does art. So he has some merch. He actually hooked me up. And Dan, um, who you met last year with some, some, some pieces. So. You know, like I said, overall, can't complain, you know? <laughs> I bought absolutely nothing. I don't even think I looked at anything. I bought Ubers. <laughs> I bought Ubers. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I, bought. I bought a hell of a lot of Ubers. That was the one downside uh, Thursday trying to figure out, like, where to go because it was a Thursday. We did bounce around a lot. So, you know, a lot of my, uh, a lot of my resources definitely went toward Uber <laughs> in the first couple of nights. But, uh, no, like I said... All in all, it was a good time. Um, like anything else, it was a, it was an experience, and I took something away from that experience, which you know I'll get to build on in the future. Um, there were some people that I network with, you know, at the show, and then going out as well. Um, that hopefully you know materializes to something in the future. So you know, yeah, keep your keep your eyes peeled for some opportunities. Yes. That's um, it, man. Party and, uh, and network. I mean, we we are in overtime, but we do have to. We do got it. We have to do hashtag hero. We have an announcement to make. An announcement. Hold on a second. And thank y'all for still hanging in there, showing sixty four watching right now. That's Appreciate y'all. Yeah. The hashtag hero is officially sponsored by the Container Store. So let me kind of give you guys a breakdown on how we're going to do the hashtag hero, and it starts today. Okay, every month we will be giving away, uh, was that five cases? So that equates uh, to uh, once a month we're going to be giving up a case. Yeah, so once a month we're going to, or one, excuse me, I think it's once an episode. So it's going to equate to about four to five a month, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was 30 for the month, 30 actual boxes. So five cases, five cases which have okay. six in each one. So this is how we're going to do it. And it starts today. Um, but this will go into November. So the last week in November, the last Monday in November, we will have the uh, the Battle of the Champions. So whoever wins today uh, goes on to the, the championship round in which they will go up against, what, three or four other people. And the winner will get, uh, you know, 30, 30 boxes from the container store. It's these guys. Um, now, or, you... or, Kev, these guys. Welcome to the North Wing. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, just a follow up from last episode, you know? And if you, and, but if you, if you, unfortunately, if you are overseas, I don't think that they uh, do the shipping. So, unfortunately, um, my skin for the win. You know, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but if you do live in the lower 48, I don't know, maybe Canada. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go with lower 48. Um, you can uh, go ahead and win. The way you win is you use the hashtag. Uh, we will pick a hashtag hero each, and then we'll vote on the actual winner. Um, so, you know, and also I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, last week's super chatters, uh, D Reynolds uh, seventy nine, kicking it with BZ, Jody Rockstar, Dragon Kicks twenty three, New York State of Mind twenty three, three one three Retro Queen, and Mister Kicks Connoisseur. Appreciate y'all. Um, next week we will have another list. Um, so here we go with the hashtag hero. We always start with mine because it's uh, on there first. Uh, my hashtag hero this week is uh, Beauty and Kicks. Alicia is it Alicia or Alicia? Alicia. Alicia. Um, mm -hmm. I, these are a pair of shoes that I want so bad that I'll right. never have because the price just keeps going up and up and up. Like that little um, yodeling guy on uh, Price is Right. But, um, you know, I, I thought this is a dope picture. The colors are popping. Um, you know, and that's my hashtag hero. Next, we got Maul. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if you want 
to talk about. I have for my Miss Kit. Might have loaded up. Oh yes, um, Air Max One Safari in the grass. Snakes keep, keep the grass low. Snakes in the grass. The grass high though. Um, you keep it low. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, uh oh, I didn't get. Hold up, uh, Marcus. Marcus was a All right. Late. Well, Marcus Dan, was, I didn't know what I put. <laughs> Dan's was, uh, Dan's was uh, Dominican Cookie. It was the I do have Dan's loaded. 13s. I have Dan's side, loaded. A little side look. And that, that's a clean shot. That's yes, a super clean shot. Um, <laughs> so who who you guys who you guys uh got? I mean, Marcus, do you want me to try to pull yours up? Pause. No, we good. We good. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with mine. Uh, my vote is uh, Alicia. Uh, I think this, I think this picture's dope. You know what? I will second that only because I want those so badly. Yeah. Um, so I think I will. Uh, I'll Sorry, L, but yeah, I got to go with Alicia. Yeah. Okay. So okay. L, I mean, you never know, man. You might you get you get picked an awful lot. So, <laughs> um, you know, you you may win. You know, maybe next week or something. And uh, so what will happen is Alicia will go into the championship round. I mean, she can keep playing. Um, we'll probably mix it up, though. So I still want her to, uh, to participate. Still use the tag. Still use but, the tag. Uh, yeah, still use the tag. Uh, but, you know, whatever whatever tag we pick, uh, make sure that you, um, you know, you're, you're tagging your shots on IG and we will, you know, we'll get to them. Um, and then also make sure that you are subscribed to the show because that will be another um, another prere- way in. prerequisite. Say that five times fast. Prerequisite, 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 prerequisite. Oh, well, then you say it then. All right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, make sure you're following. <laughs> and we can tell, um, you know, we'll have you show that you, you're subscribed. And it will show us if you subscribe in the, in the meantime. So, you know, don't miss out on that. And... Um, that's it. That's our hashtag hero. Bang bang. Sounds so what's our hero. hashtag for next week? So we gotta we gotta make sure. And also, are, yeah, I mean, are we gonna do a show next week? Why not? I will not probably oh. be on. Are oh, we gonna be, go old school? I'll be. We have a guest. I'll be in Michigan. Ugh. Do Actually, we have I, don't I, can, I don't know. Maybe I'll be close. Hmm. <laughs> We can take a break. Okay. We'll figure it out. But, um, you know, if not, then we'll have to do a, well, maybe we'll do one in the, um, later on in the week if we can, if we can fix it up. Um, but what do we want to do the hashtag for, for the next one? Hmm, suspects, what do you think? What should be the next hash- hashtag? Hotel Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. I like it. Good job. Way to go, Ben. Hashtag hotel Wi-Fi. Damn them Halloween kicks, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween kicks. Uh, uh, shout, speaking of Halloween kicks and just like shots in general, I want to shout out Kick the Habit, who has been like yes. in some crazy picks, like just ridiculous. And happy birthday uh, to him tomorrow. His birthday yes. is tomorrow. Happy early born day, son. And uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and shut her down. Yeah, yes. So, I guess I will go first, and uh, I'm going to go through my little list. But uh, first of all, I want to thank... Thanks for having me on uh, your Erica. show. <laughs> yeah. I want to <laughs> I want to thank Erica for, uh, you know, spending some time with us. I know that the uh, the hotel Wi-Fi is a, is a, is a monster. Right. It's hit or miss. But, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, homegirl, Cleveland, you know, you know, nothing but... Yeah, she was at an event, so I really, really appreciate that. She's, like, in the middle of the event. She's like, oh, that... Definitely. definitely. Shout out to you guys for sticking with us, um, even in overtime. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys um, checking us out week in and week out, um, and you know interacting in the chat and everything like that. I wish I could, you know, make it a little bit even more interactive if that could be possible. But uh, definitely thank you guys for for being there. But I'm gonna go through this list. Shout out to Jay Soul. Shout out to Mr. Kicks Connoisseur, Retro Booming Six. Uh, Mr. Unloved Ones, uh, KB Fresh Kicks, D Reynolds 79, Ben Ariel 76, 
Dominican Coqui, uh, Fresh Kicks 3, John. Uh, is there anybody else? I think, I think, oh, uh, Jody Rockstar. And I think that is it. There are some other ones that, um, that mentioned in the weekend. Uh, I do apologize. I didn't write those down and it's all intermixed with everything else. Uh, but if you did shout us out, uh, definitely appreciate you guys doing that and, uh, and helping us out. Shout out to the super chatters, um, Jody, Demetrius, uh, PGH kid, uh, Dominican Coqui, the camp out, Robert Deer, JC kicks and Lana K. Um, thank y'all. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, yes, yes. Usual suspects. Thank you so much. Uh, such a great night. I literally had no energy going into this between the interaction and the coffee that I chug. Um, I'm alive. I'm here. So, <laughs> um, shout out to my brothers on the panel, Marcus, for coming through despite all the negative interactions. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, if if I went through what you went through, I might have went home and just shut it down. So, uh, appreciate you you coming through and and making it more of an interaction as opposed to just a conversation between Kevin and myself. <laughs> um, one shout like out. That so, no, was good, but you know, at this point, might as well just FaceTime each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> IG live. Yeah, you know, shoot. Um, you know, everyone who made it out to SneakerCon and that, you know, either met for the first time or got to reconnect with, um, you know, appreciate you. Like, like Marcus had mentioned, Friday night was just super crazy. The dinner was was massive. They kept bringing more tables and chairs to, to fit everybody, and the vibe was just really cool. So, um, you know, looking forward to more meetups and interactions and things of that nature, you know, as we move forward and progress. And um, I, I want to set something up, you know, kind of like from the midsole, um, kind of a, our appreciation to everyone. So I'll connect with the guys and figure out, you know, what we should do and, and kind of have things a little bit more organized um, and, and have a central location to meet up with where we're kind of just hosting an event. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. And um, yeah, with that, um, I've talked enough for today. Hold on one second before we uh, before I go and let uh, Marcus let it out. Um, I also wanted to um, talk about uh, Mo's event, a sneaker event in uh, D.C., Sneakerhead Meetup. It's going to be oh, yes. November 10th at 3 p.m. Uh, DM unboxed app for the info. Uh, Do you have a venue yet? Uh, Do you choose a spot? I'm not I assume it's going to be International Harbor again. Um, I, I just don't know what uh, if he if he locked down an actual place. I, I'm not sure. Um, That's something I'll probably will be going to again. Um, I missed the October one, but I made it over to summer. So okay. West Wing Con. Good one, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Party at your uh, crib. Hilarious. Hilarious. Come to your neighborhood and fuck your neighborhood up. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> Marcus, let's go. Let's do it. Take it All chance. right. Uh, I just, I just want. We had, we had an incident over the weekend. I'm not gonna speak too much on the details of it, but we had a little incident with the whole ATL trip, and some things were said between me and another uh, person that is using the chat word. It looks like she's still there. Uh, word and I, word and I have always had a love hate relationship. It's, I mean, that's no secret if you follow us. I mean, we go back and forth all the time. We're both very opinionated people. I know I am. I know she is. And to, that can be sometimes, you know, an, an issue. And it became an issue this weekend. And I said some things to her that I shouldn't have said. And uh, I want to apologize in front of her and everybody else, you know, or whatever who may have seen it. There were a couple of posts made about it. I didn't take a public word you know, made some things said on IG and I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm not speaking against that, you know, but I definitely want to apologize to her. I do have issues with some of the comments that were made on the post, you know, by specific people. And it made me open my eyes to a lot of things and it's going to make me move differently going forward. So you might not see that joking Marcus, like I have been in the past, you know, just from things that I saw, it, it, it kind of changed my perspective on social media and on certain people who I thought were cool you know, based on, you know, something that was posted. But with me and Word, it's all love. I have no issue with you. You know, again, I apologize for what was said, you know, and everybody know I got a mouth. There's no excuse for it. I talk a lot of shit. I say things or what have you that can sometimes 
you know, not be right. I, I wasn't drunk. There was no liquor involved that made me say the things I said out of anger. And, you know, again, I apologize and I take that back, you know, and hopefully at some point you and I can move forward and build our relationship again to the other folks that had comments to say, I can't rock with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just what it is. Cause if, if you're my friend and you're her friend and you're taking one side of the, the, the you know, story and haven't heard mine, I can't fuck with you. And that's just what it is, you know? And I lost a lot of followers this weekend based on that. And I'm cool with that. Followers don't move me, you know what I'm saying? But to comment on something that you really weren't there and you couldn't see it and you don't know what happened between Word and I, I can't fuck with you. So, you know, some of y'all may have unfollowed me as it is, but I'm cool with that. But with that being said, it's all love. I enjoyed the usual suspects, La Familia, and everybody who came through this weekend. Y'all made my weekend so much better because I would have came back and I would have been done with everything had it not been for you guys picking me up. So that's what's up with that. And with that, we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Hello.